What is good? Came in a little hot, backed off for you. <laughs> What's good? We're back. A little fresh crack all over the mic cover. You see Jason sucking on that thing in a little bit. He's got a problem. A little beer splatter. <laughs> I'm that big of a problem. Gotta get it off the mic. We got the full tripod in effect tonight. How you guys doing? How you doing, uh, big Casey, Casey, big How you doing, Casey? How are you tonight? I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay. You uh, doing good? Yeah. Past, just checking uh, in on you, just making sure. Past the second round of uh, inspections for the the home build, so we're we're cruising right along. About that's to good. start framing. That's solid. Solid. Got to get got to get in good with the that's, inspector. That's where my life. Well, we had a we had it out today. Oh, okay. best thing that could have happened, I think. He came in a little tense. I came in a little tense. We got an argument. <laughs> he walked away talking shit. So I was like, yeah, right. Just walk, walked right up on him. Started getting at him. And then uh, then we cleared the air. Yeah. You, know, you know how when you know something's building yeah. and you just need to have the fight, whether physically or verbally. You can't let him, you can't let him leave upset and, like that. Well, he wasn't going to leave, but he was like, you know, he was. He needed he a break. Was, he was walking away and he was talking. To his he corner. turned his back and started talking shit as he was walking away. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is not happening. So then, but then after that, we, we, we gave a, a, a handshake and a, and a hug. A you, little bro a hug. hug. You broed it out? Bro In hug. 2021? Whoa. We're outside. Boundaries, bro. We're vaccinated. Out. I don't know. what He, he seems like maybe he was. Maybe he looked know. vaccinated? <laughs> no. No. He didn't look vaccinated? I mean, he deals with a lot of public. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is a very interesting the, conversation. Yeah, you know, he, he looked vaccinated. Dude, so he we, looked vaccinated. We chopped it up. I said, well, you know, the engineer said this and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, we, we went out to the out to the truck and shot the breeze a little more. And, uh, All right. I you like know. It. Got got it done. Pop him off with the ice cold water next time he comes out and get started. You know, we're on the right foot. Love nice yeah. bottled, unopened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't have any of those. Not a big uh, bottled water guy. Got to get one for the inspector when he comes out. I the, stocked uh, up when there was a uh, a rush to the co- uh, Costco's to get toilet paper. And how many cases of water do you have, Jay Wayne? I got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like eighteen. Nah, I nah, got a couple. Nah. Just like, just like opens eight. the closet door, they all fall out. <laughs> Is that why your uh, your Jeep's leaning to one side? You got them all stacked up in the Jeep. No, they're in the closet. <laughs> yeah, they are in the closet. So that's how my life goes. It revolves around uh, construction and permitting right now. So if it's well, you know, if we're in that. If we're if we're doing well there, life's all right. Exactly. So. We haven't been asking you how you've been doing. I know nobody ever does. And nobody I was, cares. You know, I was I did, nobody. To... You wouldn't have brought it up if I haven't made a big deal like the last four times we've been on the microphone. Oh, no doubt about it. <laughs> I would. I really don't give a shit, but I, you know, I listened to the last episode. I wasn't here and you gave Jay Wayne another hard time about us not asking. So I was like, I, Hey, I'm asking, I'm asking. All right. Well, how are you doing? I haven't oh, been listening to it was anything my birthday. you were saying. Got this, uh, my wife's been trying to get this hat for a while. It's, it's slick. This is the one that Kyle wears on the sidelines. It's the one that Kyle wears on the sidelines. <laughs> I don't know if he will this year. It'll probably be a new that, hat, but yeah. It's the one that Kyle wears. <laughs> try to get, try to get those joggers too. Those things are hard to get. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Rip them off. Little, them. little happy birthday. <laughs> I there. wish. Little happy birthday there. Yeah. 34. 34. What a loser. That's all? Yeah. Yikes. How you doing over there? Me? Yep. Man. Happy to be here. Excited to talk about some rookies here. Tripod. Um, the tripod. Yeah. I. You know, it's not as... It's kind of nice to listen when, when I'm not on the show because I actually get to... <laughs> hear what you guys are saying where you know whereas if i'm here i'm not really listening to you guys you too much. fuck what you're saying when i'm here <laughs> no i'm doing well doing well how about yourself jay wayne pass it around pass it around okay on to the next guy <laughs> it doesn't matter how you're doing <laughs> that's how he's doing yep and where's the uh nfl draft commissioner soundy oh whoa, whoa, whoa. oh yeah <laughs> Boom. It's already done. There's the board. So we are going to do today. Probably should have hit this a while ago. Today we are going to hit a little. Uh, 
mock draft rookie we'll draft. Be better off if you don't touch that button. Again. Last of the season here. Uh, right. We did one early. We used to do it a lot later. Now we've started doing them a lot earlier. But if anybody is not a degenerate and can wait a goddamn minute <laughs> to do the draft like an, an adult and wait till all the information comes out, some injuries happen because oh my god, they just drafted. We have to draft their team. Like, just chill out. Let's relax. All of my normal human beings who are my friends who have normal lives and do normal things, Not they're clear. all they all want to wait until the last possible week, which I say, hey, guys, can't happen. Too many home leagues. <laughs> you know, we got to space these things out. So, you know, we'll start around the 21st of August mm -hmm. um, and, and draft up until the uh, the league starts. I, I proposed before we started here, we should we should do a year where we don't draft until the season starts. We get a couple weeks under our belt. <laughs> Oh, see how that goes. Mayhem. He, he did say that. I brought up the old Lamont Jordan, and they were like, who? And I'm like, yeah, young boy's exactly. young. Young up. Um, 34. No, I, I do I do enjoy the FFPC weekend. It would be a lot better if they waited. But it does give me a round of early drafts to get my fix in because I'll be jonesing for it. And then the home leagues, like you said, a little bit more intel. I don't understand the, the logic of the FFPC to get it in so early. At least they do give you a week after the draft. Um, two weeks. Used to be two weeks, I think. Draft, it's their thing, draft man. It's keeps their backing thing. up, and the draft keeps getting closer to Mother's Day weekend, so it's getting a little tighter. It was but, all Mother's Day weekend this year. Uh, that's true. Um, Devastating. Well, that, yeah. Um, so anyway, the home league's coming up with the late late rookie drafts are nice. So we decided to throw this one together here and just, you know, probably not super different from where we were, but pro definitely some changes. Things have gone on. People, you've gotten confirmation bias on some things. You've gotten talked out of uh, some other guys. There's been a little bit of injury here and there, and there's, you know, there's a new cycle going on constantly. So whether you like it or not, you can try not to get too involved but i think everybody at some point at to some level gets a little bit wrapped up in some of that stuff going on so um man i can't say there's much of a difference in this first round from this whole off season for me too no, much i, I mean I don't, aside from the guys you can kind of jumble up here and there but for sure so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through this thing. We're going to go like five picks in. Then we're going to stop and, and talk about where the first three quarterbacks would lump in in a super flex. Then we're going to finish the round. Then we're going to say where we might take the next two or three or however many quarterbacks you think should be next. And then we're going to go full second round and then talk a little super flex about where might you slot those quarterbacks and so on and so forth. Um, Word. So we're going to do a little super flex in this mock draft as we're doing it as well. Um, so uh, we also do have a, a little uh, sponsorship where we'll be curating and kicking off here soon. We're going to be with Thrive Fantasy. Um, so we got a lot more details coming up here and uh, they got an interesting platform. I, hand <laughs> I handled it. I handled it. <laughs> them boys got an interesting platform that we're you know tell you more about here as we move forward um but over the next week or so we'll, we'll get get all the details together and share them with you guys i think it'll be a fun uh a fun thing to have but it's not in all states just like you know most of the gambling sure. thing so if that, i believe it's 32 states right now so we'll have more on that next time so thrive fantasy go check that website out um and we'll have some promo codes and that good stuff as we move forward here so without further ado Doo doo. How's gambling not legal everywhere? It's absolutely ridiculous. It's coming. Makes no <laughs> sense. It's coming. Anyway. Boom, boom, ba -da -da, boom, boom. Are we making a pick? Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so? Casey's got access to the board now, too. Man, Down I'm, in my plug. I'm bringing my own soundboard next week. All right. <laughs> Who are you feeling? How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> Who are you feeling down in your plums? How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> yeah, he hit it. <laughs> he did it twice. <laughs> Took him longer to find it the second time. Well, he, he hit it the first time, I, and then I, I asked hit, you the question. I let, I let the homies hit it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I mean, I think 1-1 one, one right now for me is still Harris. Um, the vol, you know, I think probably the same thing I said about him when we did this a few months ago. Just the locked-in volume. Um, you love you, – you, you, Casey just kind of touched on it. You, you might take a little bit too much or – Try not to take too much every every time we get some blurbs in the offseason because we're fiending for it. But you see Najee make a good couple of catches down the sideline or a nice little one-handed grab in the end zone. You're like, that's my running back making plays down yeah. the field, catching the ball. Um, I, I think for me, the 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 guaranteed volume is, is what it – I mean, ETN and Pitts are – 
as good of a toss up as you it's 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 become a lot of more fun as the off season's gone on and you start to you can familiar you know you kind of just kind of see each one of those players potentially on your team uh you know by the time Najee Hare Najee Hare's going to retire Kyle Pitts going to be 26 you know I don't think you can't go wrong at 1-1 right now because it's there's there's a lot of fun to be had up there at 1-1 if you want to get crazy with it but I think Najee's my 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 1-1 right now yeah, so I think I should mention it's full point PPR tight end premium mm. on this draft that we're doing as well. Mm. So Pitts could have been easily in that mix for the one one if you're feeling that type of way. Can't be mad at that. Um, mm. No, definitely not. And I agree with you. Harris, I think, is the number one volume, talent, uh, all of the above work ethic kind of human that he is, all those things. And, and again, we're in the swirl of a constant news cycle and everything has been fantastic for Najee. So I think bad offensive line. Who cares? He's yep. strong. The offensive talent. line was terrible last year and Connor had a strong first half of the season there behind that bad offensive line. Mm-hmm. And all they did was uh, revamp that bad offensive line and, you know, positive reviews so far out of that thing. Well, so. I'm glad you brought up the type of human. I mean, we, we, I've heard you and Casey on uh, you and Jay on multiple podcasts here over the off season talk about ETN. If you want to see what a good human looks like, just go watch a, a Najee Harris clip. You know, just mm-hmm. go get an interview with Najee Harris. I went back when um, last season when he was playing college football. He's, the reporters were talking about how he's beasting against the college kids. And I guess my, I might have been against Georgia or something, but he was just tearing them up. And after the game, they said, you know, you were making it look easy, and he was like, easy. <laughs> they were hitting me hard you know he would he right. wasn't he just deflected just like mm-hmm. we talk about etn he just deflected the praise and uh you know you, you're not going to go wrong with that ridiculous talent between the tackles in the receiving game a ridiculous off the field character you can't you can't go wrong taking Najee harris and, and then in line for a huge workload with a team that Wants to it's the bell cowness. feature a guy. The bell cowness that tips it from ETN. Yeah. If Jacksonville had came out and said the what it talked about ETN the way Harris is just plugged into Well, if there was and, no James Robinson. Well, and you and, know and Pittsburgh's history, mm-hmm. you know, all, over and over and over again, Tomlin has said has showed you, and it's not even what they say, it's actions. It's whenever they have a guy that they like and he's not hurt, he gets the ball over and over again. <laughs> Passes, carries, it doesn't matter. He's getting it. So if, if Jacksonville were to give you – I mean, just we do this every year. Next year it could be ETN over Harris easy if, yeah. if ETN's out there to get, getting any kind Go of Tigers. volume. Plus, plus pass catcher with the Harris. Uh, so, you know, got pretty good hands. And with on, Travis. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, let's get on to one-two. I got the one-two here. Um, definitely could have taken Kyle Pitts. Have no problem with that. I stand by the statement is he's a unicorn. I get everybody's mad at Kyle Pitts because he's overdrafted. Blah 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 blah. Oh, he's mad at Kyle Pitts. But all the I, all the analysts him. and everybody's yeah, like, oh, he's overdrafted. Guys, blah 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 blah. I don't really draft, care. You got a unicorn. Loved. You got a unicorn. You draft a unicorn. He's beloved. But in this particular section here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm taking Travis Etienne. Um, I want to take Travis Etienne. I think Travis Etienne is absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, you got to take. You are electric. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, there's been early. Is that a question? <laughs> I, I thought maybe you would want to jump right in there and be super Hell excited yeah. about it. But now you're going to wait. <laughs> Opened up a window. Now it's shut. Um, no, I mean. Well, he's electric. What else do you need to say? Certainly they have James Robinson. Can't guard him. And certainly James Robinson will be a factor. But we don't. Do we need necessarily Travis Etienne rookie season to be getting the amount of carries that you said it best. Najee Harris is the bell cow. So probably tips the scales for, for Travis Etienne doesn't mean the talent isn't off the charts for Travis Etienne, <clears throat> but I mean, I'll go back to a video that we did a while ago. Um, when we were just getting all up in some Travis Etienne, Alvin Kamara had 120 carries as a rookie. And I know, you know, you don't want to compare him to Alvin Kamara and yada, yada, yada. He had 120 carries. Now, he had 100 targets and 80 80 receptions. But as a rookie, he only had 120 carries. And he was RB3 in -hmm. that that season. I'm not saying that ETN is going to have 100 targets. He doesn't need to have 100 targets. He's probably going to have more rushing attempts than 120, if I had to guess. Um, and then, you know, again, unguardable right now in practice. Like, nobody wants to compare him to Kamara. But, like, really out of the two, like, the better prospect is Travis Etienne. And right. he can do a lot of the same things that Alvin Kamara can do. Is he as aggressive laterally as Alvin Kamara is? Certainly not. But, I mean, 
It's always terrible laterally. No but lateral he's agility. Still whatsoever. absolutely electric. He knows how he plays. I think he's got a lot more power than he than he lets on. Uh, he can push a pile. He's gotten better and better at that. The hands just continue to get better. There was something that was an issue, and now it's ab- ab- you know seems like it's a strength. And they're going to do all sorts of hot shit with him. Urban's for not for nothing. Whether he's lasts or doesn't last, is going to put a good offense together out there. Um, and then you have Trevor Lawrence back there, who's going to it's going to be a safety That's his valve. Guy. That's and his guy. They've already done it. Like the, you know, if they want to get if if they want to get Travis Etienne a hundred targets they're gonna get travis Etienne 100 targets like and i'm not saying he's gonna be the rb3 but i don't need him to be the rb3 drafting him right here he could be the rb10 sure at the rb12 rb14 even and it's still a win mm-hmm. for this draft this draft pick right here so i mean alvin kamara's stat line was 120 attempts 728 yards eight tds um 6.1 yard per carry 100 yeah. targets 81 receptions 826 yards five more touchdowns now does maybe doesn't have the touchdown volume possibly because maybe the jags offense isn't moving the ball like the saints offense was, that's what i was just um, gonna say but I mean, still i mean 19.4 points per game rb3 on the season i'm not expecting travis Etienne to be rb3 you don't have to but, draft him as such in a real like in a startup agreed i mean you know Kamara came in while Drew, Bre- Drew Brees was still throwing for 5,000 yards, and the, the, the Saints were moving the ball up and down the field surgically, and the way they use their running backs, you know, we were chasing the Saints pass catching running back for the past decade because of the way they did, worked it. Um, you know, from all the way up, Pierre Thomas jumps out. You know, Darren mm-hmm. Sproles, uh, those guys, you know, the Saints running back targets were where it's at. ETN comes in. We barely knew who Kamara was coming in, just like what you just now. Oh, said. we were all over him on this show. I, I as a whole, as we a, were all over my man from Tennessee. On as this a show. whole, well, Alabama initially, and then most people off the field issue didn't didn't know who Alvin Kamara mm-hmm. was. Just like Casey said, the prospect ETN's been in the national, been on the front. I mean, he's he played at Clemson. He was in the biggest games for the last three years. So we all know who too ETN good is. for too long. Um, hundred percent. You know, I think Casey's right. You can't. You can't go wrong with ETN right there. I think I think value wise, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the first four picks. Um, but I like ETN as a, a guy to come in and and help you win, win and win early. It's it's funny to me that ET like I, that's that's was my sentiment when we first talked about him with uh, Angelo was that I think the knock on ETN is just too good for too long, and you know he'd have been better off if he just. Obviously, if he came out last year, he'd have been with one or two, and yep. like he just, he just was too good for too long. So now you're just nitpicking all these silly things, um, and I think at the end of the day, he's a- absolutely outstanding prospect who's who's absolutely going to slay it. And you know, people, if he didn't fix catching the ball, you guys would be murking him for it. But he fixed catching the ball and has since excelled at it. And he can run routes and can be a weapon. And, but nobody cares about that. Like he gets no advantage because of that. And they might lose some touches to James Robinson, but he has the ultimate trump card in the fact that he can be this ridiculous weapon deployed anywhere on the field, as well as two, two tailbacks. And there's just going to be times where you've been getting James Robinson and you're going to put Travis Etienne on the field and it's going to be different. And he's going to hit a home run. And, Trevor Lawrence is still a rookie, and he's gonna. There's gonna be times that right before he snaps, as you can be like, mm, that defense isn't. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm just gonna throw it to ETN right. real quick. I'm gonna throw. I'm just gonna he check. He knows he can I'm get gonna, an 80 yard tutty. I'm just gonna throw it to my guy, <laughs> and then anything can happen. And draft capital, right? That settles it. Like Jay Wayne, you're up. First round draft pick. Yeah, let me get that. Perfectly fine with a first round running back at at the back half of the first. In the real draft. Yeah. Get yep. out of here with that. All right. You're up, Jay Wayne. Who are you taking? Obviously, you're taking Pitts. Well, yeah. It's up there already. I thought for sure that uh, Pitts would not be here at 1-3. I could take E.T. I thought for sure he's going 1-1 because uh, that might have been what I would have done. I don't know. I could easily take Pitts at 1-1. <clears throat> I, I think we're all in the same boat. You could take yeah. Pitts wherever you want. I was taking E.T.N. to make a fucking statement here. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And if I'm on the board, I'm going to take ETN because I went to Clemson. But, and I feel super safe about that pick. Obviously, feel super safe about Kyle Pitts. I don't need to say anything about Kyle Pitts. He's a man. Right. If he falls to you at 1 3, that's probably a rarity. He, he probably get, doesn't make it to 1 3 in any draft you're going to be in. He didn't get past 1 2 in yeah. any FFPC draft that I had. That's ever. Have six, it is tight end premium. Six rookies, but. six tight end premium drafts, and um, maybe seven. 
no no pits at one three. He was gone by one two or earlier. He went one 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 time and he went one two after Harris and every other draft. Yeah. I have no so, pits or ETN, so I'll be I may got two or three drafts left. And uh I don't think it's gonna work out. I don't know I if I can figure out how to do it. But. Trevor, that's it. All right, Big Co, back up. We're just gonna keep you rolling. You have to have had a bad team last year to get one of those guys. Right. Gotta get lucky. Gotta get lucky. Or trade right, for right someone's year. first, and there be a bad team. That's so you know, movie. last last I I kind of mentioned it, but you know, Kyle Pitts is twenty years old. So and and Etn is twenty two without looking into months, and Najee Harris is twenty three. So like I was saying, just a last little thing there on Kyle Pitts. If you wanted to just swing for the fences, maybe he doesn't do as much for your team in the next two years that Harris and Etn could. But in five years, when Harris and Etn are afterthoughts Kyle Pitts can be 25 just trying just get yeah. just just scratching the surface of what mm-hmm. good tight ends do so the ultimate hey I'm gonna have that like we people talk about that with quarterbacks all the time and it never happens in dynasty I, I don't know if I can think of one dynasty league where everybody's got the same quarterback they had five years ago it just doesn't work like that but if you want Kyle Pitts he's 20 you could grab him now and have him till he's 30 he you know that's just how it works um so anyway one and, four. and a tight end, one point five tight end premium, no brainer. Yeah, I mean, in two, these whole I can have a wide receiver on my team for ten years. You can take that sentiment. If Kyle Pitts, of it, but, if Kyle Pitts does eighty percent of what Pitts, people want him to do, he'll be the first tight end off the board next year. And he's the first, I've seen him go in a, the first tight end off the board in a startup just because people know you can't get him. You can't get him, even though he's not going to produce like those you other guys you can't right away. Fucking get him. Yep, can't get him. So one four is Jamar Chase. Um, Easy pick again. I kind of said for me, his top four is kind of juggleable, but with the running back production you're going to get out of Etienne and Harris, to me, it's hard to take Chase over one of those guys and then Pitts. So Chase is the easy one for if you're at one four and you get stuck with Chase, and if you get lucky enough, if you got the one five and somebody likes the you know Javante over Etienne and that kind of stuff happens, and you get one four or one five and you're stuck with Jamar Chase consider yourself lucky and put him on your team no fancy stuff yeah i mean if you want to trade him for aj brown i can condone that but like don't fuck around take chase take chase there yeah i mean you you're getting you, a lot of gifts have been handed out right now and you're getting gifted a, a, a really strong prospect at one four with with jamar chase here some negativity coming out of camp right now with jamar but um oh yeah we'll you know he he looks like a the, oh, you know, one of the best right. one of the best prospects coming out in a long time. So I mean, just take what you're given there and see what happens. I mean, Harris, Etienne, and Pitts could all bust as well. So, um, you know, take what you get there and, and be excited that you got the shot at Chase at one four. Um, yeah, dude's a stud. He hasn't played football in forever now, and it might not, take him a minute to warm up. It might take the whole whole offense a minute to warm up. Their quarterback's knee went crooked less Bad than a year ago. Bad blurbs about him going on you right know, now, too. Bengals in general. You take you take your opportunity right now if you've already had your rookie draft or you're coming into a startup. If there's anything right now negative about the Bengals, take your opportunity to get Chase 5% off. You know, he's not going to be – he's never going to be on the clearance rack and, until he gets an injury but because he's just too much hype around him. But, you know, right now – if there's any kind of negative clouds, that's that's the, you might not ever have another chance to pounce before he is maybe in Justin Jefferson land. Yeah, so I think I think we're going to move to pick five here. I think we're all pretty much in agreement that regardless of how you have the first four, that Javante is the one five. Mm-hmm. I can get down with that. Got it. Got to take the stab on the running back. Yeah, I'm going to take the running back there. I like the profile of Javante Williams. We have a whole talk chit chat about Javante Williams with Angelo in the beginning of the season. Uh, we all, you know, like him some, but I'm not taking him over ETN. I'm not mm-hmm. taking him over Chase. I'm not taking him over Pitts or Harris. We all pretty much have him slotted at five. Fine with taking him here at five. Um, but let's take a quick break on this and then let's bring in the super flex part of this. Are all three quarterbacks being obviously Lance or uh, Lawrence at one and then Lance and Fields. Are you taking both of those quarterbacks before you take any of these position players that we just talked about? Any of them? Um, I you, d- you have to. I, I have. You, if you don't want to, you trade back and maybe you get him because someone else didn't take the quarterback, but then you, get, you picked up something to still take the quarterback. You take the quarterback and you trade back. That would be my answer. Right. Didn't we? What, what pick did we just now have? One seven and um, one eight. 
We have one eight in the super flex. Fields didn't make it to, to us, did he? Nope. No. No, neither did Zach Wilson. We could have taken Mac Jones. Uh, we, we we got no quarter. There was no quarterbacks available. We, we could have taken Mac and Jones, but we, we had Chase. We could have taken Jamar Chase. We traded Chase for Darren Waller plus. Gotcha, gotcha. We got a That's second right. and we had Chase and on Darren the Waller for Chase. Because the three quarterbacks were gone. Get back a third. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you got to, like you said, it, uh, I think Justin Fields went right in front of us at 1 7, maybe, right? I think he went at 1 5. I think he just or think one he stuck around for another pick. And he, so, yeah. If, Agreed. If uh, to me, it's the first three picks should be quarterbacks. But if you're at three and you don't want, if you're not that sold on them, then you could trade back because it you're probably not going to get. You're probably not going to get. So you, if you get stuck with Zach Wilson, you know, like you don't want to get too far back. We talk about the trades and we have podcasts about this stuff all the time. But you can't. If you if, if you if you can't get a deal done, just take the quarterback, like Jay said. But if you don't want to take a quarterback at three, and I mean. I think I think Najee Harris went one two in that draft after Trevor, you know, and then or and then maybe Kyle Pitt, uh, Trey Lance next or something. I think like it was that. Lance. I think the first two quarterbacks were or the first two players were, yeah, Lance or uh, Lawrence and Lance, and then might have been Najee. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna let Lance get by me, just because of his. I'm not. There's no chance I'm taking any play. I'm taking I'm taking Trevor and Lance or Lance and Trevor, however you want to play that. Lance, Trevor Lance. Lance is a Trevor's a more of a guaranteed not bust, but and you can start him week one. Trace Trace going to score points. Yeah, I, and I and I feel really good about. I like Fields a lot, so I think I'm taking probably all three quarterbacks. Um, and like you said, if you really don't feel great about one and you can't get a deal done, you probably take the quarterback. I'm probably taking all three: Lawrence, Lance, Fields in that order. I could be okay if you wanted to push for me personally. If you wanted to push Fields down past. Pitts, Harris, ETN, uh, I could be okay with that. I could see that. But I'm mostly just taking those three I'll definitely push Zach and down then, that well, far, sure. I think. Um, and then Zach or Chase, if you need a quarterback, it's easy to take Zach. So those Gotta three quarterbacks him. are fine there. Got to take the quarterback there, too, almost, just because he's going to play. You know he's so, going to play. So you're putting Zach Wilson in the top five. Well, I was saying after, after the three. Harris, I'm, E.T., and Pitts. Yeah, just because, I mean, I think I think that even if the even if the quarterbacks are failing, I know we've been talking about this a long time and I probably shouldn't keep going, but I think this might actually be decent. Even <laughs> even if the quarterbacks are failing, because they're gonna, some of them are going to fail. Everybody, they're, they're, it hasn't been a spot on radio that somebody hadn't said, oh, well, there's you can't have all five of these quarterbacks be, sure. be good and be really good. Yeah, some gonna, of them got to bust. Some of them's going to bust. Trey and Justin could be failing for two years on their way. They could be failing, 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 but putting up fantasy points sure, with exactly. their legs as they go down. They go down in a in just a wonderful, fiery explosion. Like Jalen Hurts probably will. Y- you know, but and, for two years. And they'll probably get more opportunity, even if it doesn't work out with the initial team, that somebody else will take them because of the rushing advantage and, and keep trying it right. maybe again. And not, I mean, obviously, you know, Zach is when the pocket's wide open at BYU, he can look and looking a little bit athletic and he can get out there and run around, but he's no Justin Fields and Trey Lance. Those two guys, even if they bust, they can be fantasy productive for a few years as they work their way out of the league. If that's how that, if that's the ones that happens to, mm-hmm. if Zach's a bust, he could be swallowed up bad off. You know, the jets have a decent offensive line, but he, you know, he's more, he much more, you know, David Carble than, those other those two running guys who was that, hot for a second you know those two guys that cares can, about they can move around and do something i mean trey lance like i'm i'm counting on him to be young cam newton in a good offensive system well, you're just trusting kyle shanahan so and the legs and, yeah, yeah put trey just, and kyle marriage i'm um, fantasy points in heaven i'll take it i'll put that my money on that mm-hmm. so where are you putting zach wilson here in the uh once because seven. of the quarterback, I, if you Once want to seven. flip a coin, I, I'm taking Zach before I take Williams and it's not Javante. Yes, yeah, for sure. And and Chase, it's I could flip a coin on that. I think there's a lot less chance that Chase is a bust, but I've been saying this for five years on here. You can always get a receiver. Maybe you don't get a Justin Jefferson, but maybe Chase never lives up to that either. And you know, so um, I think you could flip a coin on the quarterback versus Chase there. 
but I'm gonna take I I could I'll take the I'll take the two running backs and the Kyle Pitts in front of Zach because agreed I just feel less confident about him and it's nothing against him and I think the Jets can be heading in the right direction. No, I mean you gotta you gotta play but you gotta you gotta you gotta feel figure, it out and you gotta figure out who you like over who and I mean I, I don't I it just when I watch you can't just blindly take all four quarterbacks because they're they're what, quarterbacks what, the other two bit, have the advantage like he, you said with the run with he the is running. the second pick in the draft and he's going to get every opportunity but look what little bit of BYU stuff I've watched from him he is. Is, it is ridiculous how much space is between him and the current closest defender when he's making his plays. Mm. So all of a sudden, you're going against probably the worst player on the defense might be better than anybody you played against in your college career potentially. Then all of a sudden, it's not so easy. Yeah. And no, I I agree. I think I think I have I'm absolutely not taking him before Harris, Etn, Pitts come off the board. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the, those other guys were offer rushing with upside with that. Plus, you know, I like the two systems that they're in Shanahan and, and Nagy. I think there is still something to be said for that. Who knows how long he hangs around, but I think there is some, some juice in that offense. Um, and then it'd be a coin flip between Jason and uh, before between chase and then Javante, I would take Zach Wilson after chase or before I don't not haven't. I don't really know if I was on the clock. I think that's fair to say that's a whole lot easier to trade for the wide receiver, although the really good ones, you know. Let's say you're just now starting to get into Superflex because you've been hearing about it for years and your team's, you know, you know your home league is like, ah, let's try this thing it out. It'll be fun, guys. Let's, let's try it. If let me, let me tell you how it works. The, super, like the second quarterback thing, it can be a bad quarterback if he can be – you can still be scoring 17, 18 points a week. You have to have – you have to have a, a quarterback in the super flex position to be competitive or your team is studded out depending on how many other flexes you have. Like – you got to spend money on that second quarterback you, in the draft. That's, even, like, that's what I'll say. That's, you know, if you're Get looking, that second quarterback. You can figure the rest of the shit out. It wouldn't be your first year if you're going through the rookie draft in a super flex. Fair. But if, let's just say it's been one year and you're like still unsure how this works. You have to have a quarterback in that super flex position mm -hmm. unless you just have some, ridic some right. ridiculous some so ridiculous squad. If you need the quarterback, take Zach unless Wilson. You're starting, unless you're starting unless you're, Darren Waller in your super flex spot right. and a tight end premium every week, then mm -hmm. you right. might be all right. Exactly. Like there's like all, just quarterbacks score more points. So that's why you even if, even if one's not playing fantastic, you know Zach Wilson's about to come in and get every snap for the entire year if he doesn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's finish this out, and then we'll figure out where Mac Jones maybe slots into this. All right. You good with that? Sure. All right, so you're up next. All right. Yeah, you I'm take Devonta to Smith for the yeah, podcast listeners boy. out there. So Devontae Smith, 1-6 off the board. I struggled like a – I always struggle a schmidge with 1-6 because I, I like want to put Waddle in there, but I just can't. I just can't put Waddle in there. And – I guess I'll let the tiebreaker because I, I, I think I probably like Waddle Sitch, Sitch a little bit better, but Devontae, for one, was just so damn good on the field, right? That's the thing with Waddle, the analytics people don't like him. He had a bad breakout age, bad dominator. He can't be any good. We did a video on him, outlier or bust, right? Because if anybody that the analytics people didn't like that was good as an outlier, that's what we're looking for, right? So I'm all about taking Waddle, and I could almost take him there at one six, but I gotta go with Devontae Smith, who's just he's just a freak, and he's so smooth, and who knows what's gonna happen in Philly? It could be Jalen Hurts, it could be Deshaun Watson. The value would tremendously change if that ended up happening, but I don't think Jalen Hurts. I don't, I'm not worried about him long term hurting Jalen or uh, hurting Devontae Smith, and maybe even Jalen Hurts helps Devontae Smith because them boys are boys back for yeah. Alabama, so I'll take the curvy linear movement. Yeah, right? I, it's uh, and uh, let me get and, and then there's the whole like man, Jalen Waddle's ankle's still not right or something, a little injury shade. Yeah, I mean, don't like seeing that. Devontae's, now, obviously, Devontae's dealing with a hammy, but whatever. You know, this is a surgically paired ankle that was a pretty bad injury that kept him from so the hammy breaking out. And, I don't know what it is for Devontae. It's, it's two to three weeks, so missing some crucial time, but. We're playing Dynasty. I just think the overall player for Devontae Smith, I think, is is who I want. I think I want the – let me just get the player Smith over Waddle. That's why I took Smith. But I, I'm not going to argue too hard with you if you want to take Waddle, and that's going to be my next pick. 
But I took Devonte Smith one six. MCL sprain for Devonta Smith. It's it's a hundred percent Devonta Smith one six in non super flex for me. One hundred percent of the time, every time. I like the situation better. I like the player better. Like Devonta Smith could easily be the have one hundred and twenty targets. Who's stopping him from having ridiculous amount of targets over there? All he did was just completely, just absolutely smash any bit of competition that came his way in college against the best guys all keying on him he's the smartest player on the field he's like having a second quarterback we've run over all of this multiple times Jalen model is a freak athletically but i'm i'm gonna take Devonta smith i'm gonna feel i feel super confident in taking Devonta smith if there's somebody who isn't gonna bust i feel like it's not gonna be Devonta smith maybe he isn't maybe he isn't the heisman level player that we saw but i mean as long as you're not drafting a complete fucking bust in the first round, a guy who can be startable, it isn't the end of the fucking world. True. Everybody isn't a top 12 dynasty True. asset. Um, not to saying that Devonta Smith can't be, which is why he's up here. That's why you draft these guys here, because you think they can be in the top 24, 36 overall picks in a startup. Um, but, I mean, all he did was just crush over and over and over and over again. And then he was in camp crushing over and over and over again he's familiar with his quarterback you know there's a lot going on in Miami not a whole lot going on in uh in Philly and I think it's going to be Goddard and and Devonta Smith with a little bit of Rager sprinkled in and the the familiarity with Devonta Smith is going to be huge for Jalen Hurts and huge for the city of Philly and I, I I just think he's a dirty player who would, I don't care that he's skinny as a rail it just doesn't matter like yeah you're not getting hit like you used to get hit you can go anywhere you want to go and he's he knows the play better than you do so he knows where your angles are what you're doing and how you're doing it I'm gonna take Devonta Smith at one six I like it solid argument um Coming out of the draft, as he's, I mean, he didn't have to wait long early in the top half of the first round. Just a kind of a womp womp noise when both of these guys go off the board. Um, if Devonta Smith goes to a, you know, the Chargers to play with Herbert, if Waddle goes to the Char- and I'm just because the Chargers were up there, they took the tackle as they should have. Um, you know, if they if those guys work themselves into one of these wide receivers we'd be losing our minds for one of these wide receivers right agreed they both have alabama connections to their quarterbacks right right um to uh coming off the injury i think we should just agree that it was kind of awesome that he even was able to play last year um and in case he could go off on that soapbox about how we we Tua doesn't get enough credit i've been i don't think that Jalen um that the uh Eagles quarterback gets it hurts gets enough credit for what he can do more than his, with his, just with his legs but when you stress the defense with your legs and your physicality then th- throws open themselves up we'll see how creative the Eagles can actually be but I agree I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these guys I like everything Casey just said about Smith Waddle's an absolute stud as well not the tactician and not the technician that Devonta Smith is probably not the the uh study warrior that he is that smith puts in to know what the defense is doing waddle just gonna beat you and beat you over and over again anyway so that um, yeah not, so, i didn't mean to shit on waddle or a situation by any means because i don't hate it either but i mean just, i just like the neither, other guy a little you know, bit is that your next pick <clears throat> chase goes to herbert so i mean chase goes to um his quarterback in, in cincinnati right mm-hmm. so it's just more fun and so you're like everybody loves joe burrow but, you know, the quarterback, the actual – nobody thinks that Hurts is going to go out there and throw for 4,500 yards. Nobody thinks that Tua is going to go out there and throw for 4,500 yards. Um, you know, so th- these two guys right here in the middle of the first round of your rookie draft aren't as much fun as they could have been, but it means really nothing as for a dynasty aspect. Like you, like the different injuries, Waddle's – you're right, Jay. Waddle's injury is significant – and, you know, you can say, well, he got heart. He had to come back. He wanted to come back and play in the championship that was silly, game. man. Or, hey, man. Why they even do that? Don't even let the – Fuck Nick the kid, Saban. Protect the kid from himself and don't even let him go out there on the field. Maybe right. he does more damage. Um, hopefully he didn't do anything worse. Maybe there was a conversation with the doctors and then they're like, he actually can't make anything worse. But you go out on that football field, anything can happen. Anyway, um, I'm happy to pick Waddle at seven. You start – you get right here and – I think that's the right like, pick. What can you do to put a power, you know, what kind of power move can you make for your dynasty team in this spot? Unless you have 
somebody come willing to come up and actually pay for it, which Casey and I have been in a lot of dynasty rookie drafts already. And once you get past Javante Williams, rarely do people pay up for that type of normal middle of the first round pick value that you're sitting on. And if you can't do anything with it, Devontae Smith and or Waddle, both of those guys, I think, are solid picks for your team. And, you know, hopefully they both go on and have productive – I mean, I think Smith is going to be a beast no matter what happens. And uh, I think Waddle, there is a lot more going on over there with Will Fuller there now too. But um, if that Miami offense were to click, it would be a, sure. lot, a lot of fun to watch. I agree. I think 1-7 is, is absolutely Waddle every time. Jay Wayne? Sure. Absolutely. You, you said you were close, so yeah that, yeah, that would make sense. All right. Anybody got anything else? Ready to go to 1-8? Let's do it. All right, so 1-8. Uh, I'm going to take Terrace Marshall here. Um, probably not the most popular pick, I guess. Maybe throughout all of our drafts. I'm not sure that we've really seen too much of that. Um, but for me, it basically comes down to a few things. Um, Terrace is like a... Just a big natural frame who could be turned into a unique physique. Um, but he's not your typical big man. He offers a lot of versatility um, in the terms of how you can use him on the field. After Jamar, or after Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase left uh, in 2020, you saw the slot percentage climb absolutely tremendously when he became the focal point of that offense. And all he did was just absolutely slay even harder and without a quarterback in that situation. Bo, by the way, you know, as a freshman, he had a breakout age of 19.2. The 86 percentile dominator was in the, the 46.5 uh, percent. That's the 92nd percentile. So the metrics are all fantastic. Number one player, n- number one player in Louisiana, wide receiver wise, number three wide receiver in America, uh, five star recruit, just, you know, went from being an outside presence with those guys, with Justin Jefferson in the slot to, and producing, um, went into a slot receiving role for a big guy like that to go in there and absolutely dominate from the slot is ridiculous Six and that's three. probably three, where 200. he's going to end up being a decent amount of the time this year familiar with the offense does joe brady stick around probably not uh, but they're already saying he already knows what the hell's going on he hit the ground running he's awesome that we've seen you know, how great this offense can be with just teddy bridgewater in there and a little bit more risk of sam darnold um a little more risky of a player and Sam Darnold, whereas it's not going to be as conservative. I don't think across the board um, probably can operate this offense just fine with all those weapons. Sam's never seen this yet to be. That's the concern. We don't know what if Sam Darnold's going to be uh, able to facilitate this offense, but I, I feel fairly confident in Sam. But in that same way of in that draft class, a couple of those guys needs to be busts in the Sam Darnold draft class. And maybe Sam is just a bust, uh, but I, I don't think so. I like Sam. Uh, but going back to Terrace, that, that's kind of what I like. He he can come in here. They already have two receivers. Robbie Anderson probably isn't going to be there for long. And on the off chance that they don't want to sign DJ Moore, or even if they do, this guy can transform from being a ridiculous dominant slot receiver to an alpha number one. Right. Like I feel like you can get bet the best of both worlds here with Terrace Marshall. He's a unique athlete. Um, and again, just going to hit the ground running, I think, in this offense and be vet. like just as those guys, Devonta Smith and – Jalen Waddle went to their respective quarterback. Well, this guy gets to go to the college, the best college offense architect, essentially, in Joe Brady, which he was on and did work as, in as a freshman. Right. Um, exactly. And the fact hit the that he already running. knows that offense is pretty crazy. And and it doesn't matter if Brady leaves after one year, really. You already get your – you're going to get your freshman, freshman receiver value takeoff because he's going to go in there and be a starter with them. Anytime they got three wide receivers on the field, Marshall's going to be on the field. Because he knows the offense. He doesn't have to go through those growing pains. He's not over there just being like, what was that play call again, coach? Right. Z spot, blah, 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 flanker left over here. Yeah. You know, like, oh, okay, I'm, that's his guy. They, Like you said, not the quarterback, but the coach, maybe even more important. You know? It's possible. And so the coach, they already said, hey, we're force feeding him everything to bring him up to speed over here. And uh, so I think, I hope, I hope that this is, this is kind of like a, you know, a crystal ball type pick for Casey here. Terrace Marshall usually goes more back to the end of the first round, early second. And I like Casey's statement. And he says, I'm going to bring him up here. <clears throat> it's not, I think that, I mean, the number one recruit, top wide receiver coming out of high school stuff. He grew in, I mean, 6'3", 200 pounds, can play in the slot, play outside, body dominant. I mean, 
he could easily be more startable for your fantasy team than Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle week in and week out to get started on. And it, and it shouldn't surprise. It might surprise people not listening to this, but it shouldn't surprise anybody when you put when you add it all up. Um, I I think it's a good pick. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, this is in that range where you're like, hey, I don't, I like, I like Marshall, I like Moore, I like Bateman, I like Elijah, I like these guys. Let oh, everybody's just, taking the running. Let me just here. get what I can get. To, let me back up four or five picks and pick up a second round pick next year and have more assets, and I can get another player that I like. If you, if you can, if Casey just talked to you into having Marshall be your guy, I'm, I, I'll second that motion. Yeah, I mean he. He was, like I said, unstoppable in the red zone then. You know, since 2019, he had the third most red zone touchdowns in college football. Um, and then again, with the big man, he got that big man, my ball mentality, contested catch, 81.8% uh, on the contested catch rate. Straight in, facts. In 2020, that's the third best with anybody with at least 50 targets. Um, Keeping and just can, can do all of it. Like he can play, like I said, he can go right in here. He can play in the slot. He can get that money and get that 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 work those opportunities crush with those be a factor in the red zone immediately and then he can shift to being the alpha a 1a number one because i'm not so sure that necessarily that david or yeah david dj Moore, Moore. dj Moore is not that dj Moore isn't a great player but I, he's i don't think he's your number one alpha type of guy whereas terrace marshall could work him his way and be molded right into that prototypical outside beast number one who can move around a little bit so I, I think you're getting the best of both worlds with that pick there and i think that makes a ton of sense i think dj Moore could be your number one if he's in, in like a system dependent type of number one like a you know antonio brown was the number one he wasn't a physically dominant player right well you know? fair enough just, yeah that, you know it, that's it, not, it's I guess not that the, didn't mean but he doesn't have physi physical, dj just, Moore doesn't have the size to be the outside it's not dominant even that because he ate antonio Brown doesn't have the size either. He he just it doesn't look up to this point like he is taking over the alpha in the room. You know I was I mean? more like, I was more regarding size prototypical prototypical. That's what I mean. Like with Terrace. outside, but yeah, you're all right. He just hasn't. He just it doesn't look like he. Can I don't be think he's on as the number one as the, the guy and the flexibility. Whereas Terrace showed he could in college and the flexibility of Marshall just adds to it he's does not he size. doesn't have to just be like hey bro you're six three get outside right exactly he can do it all and you know he's six three but still only 200 not 225 where he's just gonna be too stiff to be inside yeah. um and I like, like I this, think about converting him to tight end I like where this draft right I like where this draft is going here because most like Jay said most drafts by the time you get to pick eight pick nine there's going to be, you know, the Trey Sermons and oh, they the want Michael the running Carters. Backs. They got to have the running They're going backs. to try to find – and this, that's normally where we go to Agreed. as well. Trey Sermon, Michael Carter. And, and we did this months ago, and Casey said, I can't take these running backs because of mm. the, the, the more of a guarantee out of these wide receivers. When I took Waddle at seven, I was trying to put something on my team that I knew was special, right? Marshall and Jason's pick next at Rondell Moore, like – you are playing the odds with these players. It's just a better draft prospect. It's just a better nope. player to put on your Nobody's team. Nobody's going to sit here and tell you that we through, you know, in week 10 of the season that you might not rather have Trey Sermon than some of these guys because he could be balling out. Michael oh, there's, Carter there's absolutely going to be a time during the season when you're like, damn, I wish I had Trey Sermon on my team. But then I also feel like it's not going to be that long before you're like, oh, I, well, I don't, I don't need him. I wish I had anymore. Marshall on my team. You know, it might be a year or two down the road, but like a guy like a Jalen Waddle, Devonta Smith, Terrace Marshall, these guys are going to be here for the long haul. Whereas one of these running backs could come in, hit you, and that's my that's been my spiel for years on this show. They're going to come in and hit you with that bright light right away, but then it could dim out like a, most of them do. Well, it's and just, these it's guys, hard to trust Sermon with his injury history and, and the track record, and it's hard to trust the Jets with Michael Carter and and his profile doesn't necessarily he's well, yeah, not like he, a 1a kind of guy i don't think but it, right he's a buck 99 you know which and, i don't want to knock a guy too much for his size and he does have ridiculous receiving ability but i every, just don't you're just projecting so much to take him over these guys these these high second round picks who not everybody can be shady mccoy though electric 200 pounds can work jamal but williams that's why right, people, 195 that's like why people chase Chris, the javante Chris williams Johnson. because he is 220 that's Come why on. people right. are chasing javante williams right now because he does plow people over and he's harder to tackle because he's 220 but he, he two can't oh, house it from 80 like the other lighter guys can 202 and, and can carter work, has some of that juice but not as often 
but I can't be taking Sermon or Carter. I got without. some poison ivy. If you got on camera, if you see me, just, you know, I got I got some poison ivy. So if you see me scratching. I'll I'll touch on some sermon and some Carter when we get there. So you're not you're obviously not taking those guys at at one nine. So who are you taking? Oh, I, he already t- he said I took Rondell Moore. Okay. Which, board. Well, I'm just I want to talk through it for the podcast people because everybody's not gonna have the luxury of sorry. Yep, the, got uh, it. Got it. Right. The video. If you're just listening on the podcast, go hit me with a YouTube subby. Right? <laughs> uh I, I this is the perfect spot to try and trade back. You don't necessarily need to take Terrace Marshall and Rondell Moore at one eight and one nine, right? You should Fair. be trying to do what you can to move back because there are people that really want Sermon. They want tr- Trevor Lawrence. People still st- sticking on the Rashad Bateman train, like hardcore. You know, at one seven or one eight, I can't. I'm not jumping off the Rashad Bateman train, Batman. But I can't take him over these two guys, and so. I mean, with Rondell Moore, I just am so enamored with Rondell Moore. I know he only had one good year, but at least it was his first year, so his breakout age is strong, <laughs> uh, which I don't care about. But it, that was a fantastic freshman year. This dude's change of direction is incredible. He's just a separator in every sense of the word. He's in an offense where they can scheme him into space. They're on record saying they want him manufacture him touches. The other wide receivers, Christian Kirk, A.J. Green, them boys are missing time. Andy Isabella was on the COVID list. Like, he's had the time Back in camp. It. Again? Back on it eight days later. <laughs> Damn. Back on it. Live it up while you can, kids. Jesus Christ. Get the vax. All right. So. <laughs> Get the vax. Uh, I just I just love everything about Rondell Moore. It sucks that he dealt with some injuries. Terrace Marshall also dealt with some injuries. They both seem to be healthy right now. I'm not trying to knock either one of them for it moving forward. Rondell, I love. I, I really still. I'm still believing Kyler Murray. I believe in that offense. They want to throw the shit out of it. They're going to run him in the slot, so he's not at risk of losing snaps to some of the better wide receivers on that team. They're going to run four wide most of the time. Just put the ball in his hands, whether it's rushing, receiving, short stuff, long stuff. He's electric. He's so fast. He's just a threat to house at every time, and you can't catch him. He's squatting 600 pounds as a true freshman, so he's like super strong dedicated works hard i just love everything about yeah. rondell Moore, and i can't decide whether i want him over terrace or rondell casey made a great argument for terrace and i don't think rondell could ever be that 1a guy so maybe that's that's probably the one thing that he said that was like oh man maybe i do really need to just buckle down here and take terrace Marshall yeah, but, you know being the, being the 1a guy doesn't necessarily mean you're the better fantasy producer i mean True. probably look though. at bobby woods forever mm-hmm. fair. just absolutely slaying it mm-hmm. fair um, but never more than like a fourth round startup pick no but uh, sometimes i don't give a shit about what what startup pick you are where you are if you're fantastically consistent and great in my lineup that's it's not my fault that the general public is retarded on uh certain aspects up. of you know now he's 29 or whatever or 20 however old bobby woods is 28 so yeah probably fourth or fifth round sixth round pick but there was some years there and yeah he had golf but now that stafford's there it's it's gonna be a, this is just a fantastic every week starter with bobby woods there and you know sometimes that's worth its weight in gold regardless of you know maybe he never quite makes it up there but some you know some guys are just have a cult following and they get over you know, that's really all this is about is whether or not you like guys at, at the price tag that that you have to pay for them true um so yeah I, I agree i would say rondell moore would be the next receiver after terrace marshall for me um I, like you said i think you made a good point with you know not the worst about to try to trade back a little bit here definitely um, you gotta try you gotta right. try to move back uh, like five picks you can move back to the end of the first and pick up pick up some stuff you know yeah some so stuff and some things. Big Co, you're up things. with uh, pick 110 here. You go Trey Sermon. Hit us One. up on Discord if you want a specific answer to your Trey question. 110, Trey Sermon. Um, I think if I was stuck at this pick and I couldn't trade back, I almost took Elijah Moore. Um, but I just, I was, I was about to select Elijah Moore and then Kyle Shanahan started whispering in my ear. Um <laughs> And you know, beat the pussy up, beat the pussy up. <laughs> Why do you see my dick? <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't want to miss out on the uh, 49ers run game there. Um, they they did the 49ers just basically went and reloaded the backfield. The st- I think the stat was out of the every team in the NFL the last two years they played their third and fourth string running backs more than any other team. Uh, we all know about their injuries. 
Um, and then they go and draft a, a player who has been injured, but Sermon would maybe with um, – unforeseen upside because we haven't seen a lot of him but when he hit that stretch in ohio state and carried him to through the playoffs it was trey sermon trey sermon all day long Mm -hmm. um those two games two games and then he exited the first snap of the the championship game but the thing is now he's got when it happens and when all if all that magic comes together and people are healthy and things work out like kyle wants them to obviously if it Raheem Mostert could be housing at 80 yards every time he touched it. That's what Kyle wants. But if Trey Lance is handing off to Trey Sermon and the defense doesn't know what to do and they're leaning off balance, Sermon could be picking up eight yards a clip. Yeah. So it could be nasty when it's when it's rolling. Sermon's you know? dirty. He's a great, great running back. I really player. enjoy I took Sermon at one Trey Sermon. The contact balance. I would not it's a tarantula. Re- regret getting Sermon on my team at the end of the first round. So he's got eight legs. But the the Colt following, the the dynasty value that Out of nowhere. Could, because people did not like him pre-draft. I'm going to Elijah Moore with the Colt following. Oh, uh, because it's it's pumping sure. and it's pumping hard and it's getting better every day. That's and then fair. You had the draft night where AJ guys. Brown was on sitting there with him in his room crying, talking about you got you know stuff that I didn't know and you know this and you know and then everybody everybody that meets he, everybody that meets Moore says he's the one. He's this, he that, and then everything that he tweets is all about. I'm doing everything I can do to be the best. I'm not doing this. I'm just running with the twos, though. I mean, it looks like Elijah Moore's getting safer and safer of a pick from a Colt following. From a a from a from a a dynasty value, DJ Moore s Colt following to actually what he might end up doing on the field as well. So I might want to. I might want to cash a ticket to the elijah moore show and put him on one of my teams before yeah. it's before the values taken off on me and i can't get him i i was gonna uh, whether we got to elijah moore or you brought it up at some point i was that's essentially what i was gonna say is when you said you almost took elijah moore was gonna be you know the, you know i could get it because there is just like we were just talking about for some reason some guys what i don't know why it is they just get this crazy following and some guys never get it and some guys get it the the next year and but Moore has it right now. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. As long as he does something this year, it'll stay there. People will be excited about it. So, I, you know, I don't hate it. Trey Sermon, in the same regard, like Jay Wayne was confused with for there for a second, um, has gotten his own cult following as well, probably on the positional scarcity, and it's the 49ers. Sure. Um, they presume him to be the lead dog there, which they don't understand. They have a stable and a rotation. Yeah. That's, ah, that's, rotation. that's my... I love Trey Sermon as a player. I was hoping love that him. we would be able to get Trey Sermon middle of the second, right, late, as a steal. late second, and be because nobody wanted about him because he was so injury prone but and he had he no production. Then he goes to the Niners. And then he goes to the Niners, right. and I'm, you know I'm excited because I'm wearing Monsters the Monsters. I'm wearing Kyle's hat. Um, Jeff Wilson tears his shit. So you know they bring in Wayne Gallman, who you know will we'll, we'll, we'll probably maybe. have have some sort of a role. I mean, most are pick him up. Gonna have a role. Pick him up. <laughs> Jeff Wilson, when he comes back, all he did when he goes out there is do work. Um, so he'll probably, you know, it's just whether or not, it, I think Jay Wayne said it perfectly, was just what week is Trey Sermon going to get in there and do the thing? And then the injury is the other part of it. Is Can he, can he completely stay healthy I hate saying that about for how anyone. long? And I just, I got a real hard time taking him at 110 uh, when I would just, I think, rather have the receivers and Trevor Lawrence, quite frankly. Um but I, I get it. I understand it. And the longer and longer this has gone on, the more and more I could be like, okay, if you want to take him at one twelve, it's more or less principle at this point that I want to. Take, I don't. I want to take him at two one, so he's in the second round. <laughs> um, but I, I can't understand it. It's just you can't. they haven't shown me that they're not going to use three guys and they're not going to ride the hot hand and you're not going to know when you want to play who and, and the quarterback's going to rush it in with the, Lance that well that I think that hurts Sermon the most because Sermon but he also gives helps because he stretches it Sermon gives you well but but Sermon gives you that battering ram right that a lot of those line. other running backs don't have on that Niners situation so he gives you a little different style than they've had but if Trey Lance is in there He's probably going to get the touchdown upside that he could possibly have by getting those goal line reps because he's different than those other so touchdowns. Split with Trey Lance. Maybe snatched up a little bit. So yeah. it could be a little bit of a catch 22 right there um, for Trey Sermon. But I, 
I want to hate it, but I can't hate it that bad. I'm not personally doing it. Probably moving them a couple spots down, but I mean, we we do this all the time. I can't take him there, but I'll take him two spots later. Like, what the fuck, who fucking cares? Yeah. Like, if you like the guy, take him. I love the guy. I think he's great. I love the Niners. I think the run game's great. I, I can't argue with it too much. I just don't really want to do it. Um. So next pick is Trey. Oh uh, yeah, Trey Lance. Next pick is Trevor Lawrence. Um, I could have taken Trevor Lawrence at one eight, one nine, one ten, wherever you want. I know everybody gets mad at generational this, that, and the third, but probably is the most sought after prospect in a long, long time from quarterbacks, maybe since Andrew Luck, um, and has the same kind of thing that Andrew Luck had, where it's the sneaky rush ability, where there's can be hidden yardage yep. in that game plan from week to week, where. Yeah, maybe the Jaguars aren't the best offense ever, but, I mean, he's probably going to be just fine. They have weapons everywhere. The offense will be schemed up. It's not going to be Drew Brees, certainly, um, because he is a rookie, but it could be, and he's got the rushing ability to get you an extra four or five points a game here and there and rush, you know, some touchdowns in that'll, um, you know, probably be easy rushing touchdowns in for him. Um, Uh, Yeah. and I think that's that's the part that I think people miss on Lawrence is that there I think there's going to be legs involved in in and rushing upside, not uh, just hair, not just being as a crazy arm, great as he could be at quarterback. I mean, sure. he certainly could bust as well. But well, like I mean, he's going to be up and down as a pro thrower most likely because he's a rookie. But Urban. A lot of rookie quarterbacks use their legs more often. I mean, even non uber athletic guys like Trey, you know, Trevor Lawrence actually run around more as a rookie. I remember seeing some Andy Dalton scramble around because he's a 20 year old kid. You know, mm-hmm. he's got some athleticism. But, you know, Andy it, Dalton was killing it. TCU, TCU Andy Dalton. I remember the, seeing Andy legs, Dalton man. run around. You don't talk about Andy Dalton as a running quarterback right now. Andy Dalton came into Clemson, came in Death Valley with the TCU Horn Frogs, and was just getting first down after first down, third third down conversions over and over. It was murdering. So you talk, you, and and that's what rookie they quarterbacks us. do. They 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 try to survive. And rain. when Trevor takes off, he's he ain't no Andy Dalton. No. My man's a right. good, he's a he's a he he's a muscled up, muscled up gazelle, and he's not soft, which probably right. should be uh, taken out of his game. But it's probably going to take a minute for him to get it taken out of his well, game. That's why I, I almost went there, but I wanted to talk about that. But I, I said Urban, and then I backed off. Not he's not soft, and Urban ain't long for this game. He he's not he's never he's not. So he's gonna have some scandal he, pop up where he's got to dip out. Urban is, leave the team in shambles. He doesn't care if Trevor Lawrence is his the the franchise quarterback in ten years. That ain't his game. He don't care. He wants to win because everybody wants to know if he can win in the NFL, and he does too. That's why he's here, and he thinks he can. If they got if the best chance they got well, to win it is Trevor running the ball, Trevor's gonna run the ball, and it's it, it's not gonna be like a. A Frank Reich situation, and he just got extended. The Colts are super happy. They're GM Ballard. They ain't going nowhere. Hey, we we got we got it going on. We've had the worst quarterback luck in the last five years, and we've been stable because we got good coaches and good GM. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor, you do you. Yeah, please you know? don't run. If this was the Colts, Yolo. if this was the Colts, they'd be like, hey, he only lived one season. We got this. <laughs> Don't do, don't don't check it down and slide. <laughs> check it down and slide. Jacksonville, go. Yo, he's add a little S on there. Go. <laughs> so I think I think the I think the uh, fantasy points. This is a one QB one eleven choice right here. I don't have a problem with it. I I have a I have a let me get a second round pick, move back a couple picks, and take Trey Lance in my blood, but. <laughs> I don't have a. I I would love to have a Trevor Lawrence on one team. It's hard. To, it's hard to pay that price, but I get it, and I'm I'm all in. Yeah, the, I think the only um, downside, and I kind of said sometimes it just doesn't matter, and I think this is a good example. Like in maybe in other leagues that we draft in, but when we're doing Patreon mocks and we're doing other mocks, where's the best quarterback in the league typically go? End of the third, like that's we're. we're 
Trevor Lawrence, we're talking about a guy who's going to be, if he's the best quarterback in the league, being drafted in the third or the fourth round. But at the end of the day, like we're just not taking Patrick Mahomes because it's just kind of an agreed thing that you don't, we're just not going to take the quarterback until here. And if you did, you probably missed out on some value. So it really doesn't, that, that, like that, I guess that could be an argument against Trevor is that all, some of these guys could be, ended up being drafted way Najee already is. Um, and ETN and Pitts, like uh, most of the first guys are already being drafted higher than him in a startup right now. If he's as good as Patrick Mahomes is, like he's still probably only going to make it to be a third round pick. At the end of the day, does it matter though? In a one quarterback league, Patrick Mahomes is a difference maker. Lamar Jackson is a difference maker. Kyler Murray is a difference maker. Like, and Trevor Lawrence can so you be a difference maker. You got to get those guys in the draft, not the startup. The rookie draft, not the startup draft. Right. There was a, um, well, unless it's like Josh Allen in his second year, then it's, fantastic value in the startup draft right there was a there was an uh, an article or maybe a tweet article thread type thing i read a few years ago about when you get into the second and third round of your rookie draft and you don't know who to take just take the quarterbacks that were drafted in the first round of the nfl draft and if you think about that of course some of them are misses but like casey said the ones that you would have been picking up the josh allens and the this and the, these guys over the last couple of years that nobody else really wanted other than the super popular ones that would, you know, occasionally jump into the first round of the rookie draft. But those guys at least established if when they hit, they established themselves a certain value versus you're just throwing darts in the third round of a rookie draft. Anyway, of course, we're talking about Trevor Lawrence. We're talking, and you get some running quarterbacks and Justin Fields and Trey Lance. No, but none of these guys are going to make it to the third round, but Zach Wilson did, yeah. you know, and so that's that's kind of you know what I was bringing up there. Just you, you take these guys, and they're either you know they're, they're a coin flip to hit, but when they do hit, they're a lot. I mean, the quarterbacks are you know the Chris Evans in the third round here or whatever. You know, Kylan Hill. Like you, you may not even ever see Kylan Hill on a Sunday. Yeah, you know, in our home leagues, uh, the really good quarterbacks may go at the top of the second, and then like. The two was the Herberts and all those kind of guys end up going. The Herberts, late second, perfect, perfect late example, kind of perfect guys. example. But Her- Herbert, you could get a first round pick and a you could get a you could trade Herbert in a one quarterback league. You could trade him off and get a first round pick for him. Not from me, but from somebody all day long. And so because it's a it's, he's new and hot and he played awesome and you know he's you know hey I can get this guy and I don't have to worry about quarterback for ten more years. That you just won the championship. You got one twelve, uh, right? You know maybe you want to get Herbert. All right, 112, Rashad Bateman. I did it. Hit me. <laughs> I, I took did it. it. Uh, Get up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, got it. What, what do you got? We're going to speed this thing up. We got to gotta get to the end of this. I know we're over an hour and we're, we haven't made it through the first round. I'm so sweaty. How much time you got, buddy? Uh, yeah, we should have knocked that AC down a couple more spots. I could go do that. Let's go. I took Bateman over <laughs> more. Do I, I don't know. I could take more over Bateman. I would definitely be down to trade back a spot or two here with Michael Carter still on the board. I took Bateman. I think he's a very safe prospect. I don't love the situation, but he was getting a lot of love in camp till he went till he went down, had some injury, but should be shorter than longer is what they're saying right now. But right. It, it, Dude, this is it's what I was talking about, Smith and Waddle. If Bateman went some if Bateman went somewhere right. you liked, he'd he be been one six, six one, one five. Seven, who's, one eight. Who's taking, he has a cold following he, too. Who's which, taking anybody over Rashad Bateman if he goes to the Chargers? Like I'm just I keep that's an easy name to because Herbert's hot and new and they don't have a lot behind their top two older wide receivers. I'll still take Smith and Waddle probably, but I could put bump Bateman up Bateman's there. Bateman's right there with those yeah. boys. Bateman's a beast. And now he goes to Lamar Jackson. He excels you know. in that short area. He could be a red zone threat. He could de- develop. They need some talent infused in that offense. He's the best wide receiver Lamar Jackson's ever played with. He ain't played a down. Lamar in the NFL needs to get yet. the vac so he doesn't have to miss any more time. How, how this man's gonna miss two weeks of training camp trying to get like a hundred plus million guaranteed? What are you doing, Bo? Come on, Lamar. Let me get that vax, Bo, so you can give my man Rashad Bateman his value where he needs to be. All right. 2-1. Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Why Elijah Moore over Trey Lance before you even say anything? <laughs> um, Thought for sure because going to Trey Lance. I did. To, uh, I mean, I, I guess as much as I like Trey Lance and I think he gonna, he's going to be a difference maker, I think it takes the right team to not want to 
take a stab on Elijah Moore. I mean, you, most teams in the leagues feels good about their quarterback situation. There's a top seven or eight quarterbacks, and most most likely they're not. Two of those are not repeated on the same team. So you got you know six or seven, you know. Josh Allen, Mahomes, and all those guys, and then Kyler. You got and Lamar. You got difference makers at quarterbacks, and then you got the back half of the league, and some of those, and most of those. I mean, the Staffords and the people feel good about their quarterbacks in a twelve-team, one quarterback league. Mm-hmm. Like maybe one team. Like I got in one home league right now. I think my best quarterback is Tom Brady. So I could be look. I'm, I could be in the Trevor Lawrence, Tr- Trey Lance. But if my best quarterback is Tom Brady, that means somebody else has two or three good ones. You mm-hmm. know. So I would take. Elijah Moore here, not okay. to miss out on a good player, to instead of forcing it. With, Life train might be equal on those two guys. I'm not saying Trey, Trey Lance is forcing <laughs> it. Trey Lance ain't forcing it. Like if I if I'm a team that if I if I don't have a top six quarterback already, I'm really zeroing in. I'm trying to get a a Trevor Lawrence or a Trey Lance to to like you said, Jay. He, they they are difference makers. I want that different. Uh, you need. You need a team around your quarterback, or your difference making quarterback ain't gonna make a difference for you anyway, because your team ain't no good. I'm gonna but if take, you're picking towards the later end of the first, you might have been good. You might have been good, and a quarterback might be the one that keeps you there. You I can push I got, you over the hump. I think I got Noogie Burger and uh, that's Roethlisberger for Baker along. in this league, and I think I have one eight. So Trevor's right there. I did pick up Jameis sights. off of waivers a year and a half ago, waiting mm. for this Saints moment. As soon as he got signed by the Saints. I picked him up and put him on my bench and said, Breeze ain't going to be there forever, bull. Got him. All right, so you take Elijah Moore. Kind of talked about it, a little bit of hype building there. Yeah. Um, so excited about – excited to get Elijah Moore there. I take Michael Carter at 2-2. Um, I think Stop that's a, the slide. I think that's basically a no-brainer at that point. Now I'm okay with taking Carter and Sermon because we're in the second. Um I think principles it'll probably be the one a in that it's the same kind of regime coming from San Francisco land. So, but we haven't quite seen them have their whole thing. So there is a possibility that maybe they lean on one guy more than other people, but it's probably going to be a stable from what they kind of got going on over there with that running back room, uh, brought in a familiar face. Tevin Coleman was with the Niners with Sala and, uh, Got a little got Ty Johnson. Well, and then I like Ty Johnson. Got they got P. Ryan, who basically P. Ryan. has the same draft capital as Michael Carter. Um, but Michael Carter was part of that Batman and Robin with with Javante Williams and and put up you know similar stats. Absolutely slayed it. Got a nice receiving ability. Um, and I think at two two, I think that's a that's a great pick. I think he's going to be. I like what the Jets are doing. I like that they rebuilt that offensive line. They have a horse left tackle. They've they've gone in and. You know, Elijah Barrett Tucker, they've gotten just tried to build that trench up a little bit. They have some fun receivers. Um, they're going to probably try to lean on that same style nine or run game. Michael Carter can fit in that little system there. Uh, so I think he could be a 1A, and I'm fine with taking him uh, right here. So, Jay Wayne, you're up. Stop the Trey Lance slide. Of course, got to take Trey. Yeah. I, I thought about taking Trey. Just, again, difference maker. Uh, but. I don't have much to say. I mean, take Trey Lance at this when you feel like like it. After after Trevor, if you need a quarterback, like he's a guy that could fetch you a first round pick. There's not too many quarterbacks that can fetch you first round picks. The running ones can. When when Trey Lance is hitting, when it hits, you're not gonna take one. It's I need not, more than one. It, it'll be. It's going to be more than one. Ooh, or it's, plus, or it's going to be one from the worst team in the league. It well, if you, he's my dude and my quarterback, if I don't have another stud, then I'm not trading him. I know, you know but what I'm I mean? telling but like, you right now, like when Cam was Cam his rookie year, and and he was doing his thing, you weren't trading him to for a first round pick to the best team in the league, being like, all right, and now I'm giving you a dominant quarterback, so I'm gonna get, I'm trading you. For the one eleven or the one twelve, no, I'll just keep my quarterback and, and and trade the other one to somebody, you know. Or you, you're you're going to be marketing Trey Lance for a top half of the first round pick, or a, yeah, you want to give me a first, but you know you're already probably the best team in the league. Now I'm gonna give you Trey Lance. You got to give me something more than that first round pick. That's gonna be late, and the dude's gonna be like, you're right, you're right. Let me find something else. All right, all right. Next pick, big code two four, Justin Fields. Same same rationale as Trey Lance. Same thing. He's not. He's not as big. He's not Cam Newton. He's more the Lamar Jackson, but not quite as fast as Lamar Jackson. But maybe a better passer. Maybe a, maybe the better passer out of any of those quarter, running quarterbacks I've just talked about. 
You bite your tongue. Trey Lance is basically. Hey, I hope Jesus. so. <laughs> basically yeah, but Fields did it for a while on a big yeah. stage. Yeah, Fields is a Fields is a really good quarterback. Yeah. Oh yeah, he runs a four four. Fair enough. enough. He doesn't run enough. But as a freshman quarterback, when he gets in there again, like I was talking about, Trevor Fields is good. and those coaches are trying to save their jobs. So they might they they might not care about year four of Justin Fields either. They might be like, hey man, let me let me get another year over here as a head coach. Andy's hot, baby. Andy's hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> now nah, we'll see fields I, I i like fields i think i gotta go lay i think we're all in agreement. lance over fields we kind of sure. said that on the uh, uh top of that um you're up i'm up st brown 2.5 here so not equanimous got um I've took took him over mind. tony i just feel like the opportunity will be better right off the rip for for st brown i've talked in the beginning of this i would have definitely had tony uh in the uh spring early summer months i sure. think tony is a is a more fun talent um, but the opportunity for st brown to be out in the field every single down being a big part of this offense a chain mover um, and doing a lot of different things ppr wise um, i think st brown is is a nice a nice pickup here at two five nice stab in the uh, middle of the second round so i see that i see that what the likelihood of him being a difference maker for your team sooner than Tony is makes that an easy pick for me as well. He's going to be on the field. Mm-hmm. I feel, it feels like they need somebody to be on the field. And certainly Tony is going to be on the field. We just don't know how. Well, he's dealt with some stuff and some I, things. Hit the yeah. COVID list, had an injury. He's kind of behind the eight ball in camp in terms of that. Got some good wide receivers over there in front of him. Right. Well, Good ish, right? Characters mm, not the greatest. So, it's, well, it had some questionable things in his past. Had some questionable things at the start of training camp, too. So, you know, any, um, like Tony's first round draft pick. Anytime you can get a first round draft pick halfway through the second yeah, round right. in your draft, I love the talent. I was yeah. pretty ecstatic to take him with the next pick at 2 6. Right. Uh, I don't know if I would take Tony over St. Brown or not. Wasn't having to face that situation. This particular one was happy to take Tony. I think it's a tear break there after Tony, in my opinion. I like that. And so I want to try and get him if I can. If he falls anymore, he's pretty attainable as far as first-round draft picks go. But right. dude's electric, did a lot for that Florida offense. The year before that, they were terrible, right? The boys come in, and, and he just does stuff all over the field. He can, he can work the seam. He can play outside. He can he – can, take handoffs and he's got good hands down the field he makes adjustments while the ball's in the air and all you gotta do is get him the ball yeah. he's electric he's just sick with the, the only thing that's yeah. the only thing that's not gonna stop him is him rap and that's career. the uh, is, rap is it, career is, yeah. is the mental and the focus is he gonna figure it out that hey I wanna I want to be great I wanna be out here I wanna be part of this team I don't know him personally maybe he is like that but doesn't all signs don't necessarily point to that but i love the talent i got a hard time taking st brown over him because i love the talent so much um but i will take st brown i just all right get the head right that want to be great stuff is what i was kind of talking about with elijah moore um so i i like yeah, different, I like, different approaches between those two i think right so i like that you know the line there for you jay i would say the tear break for me goes one more block with chuba he just happens to be buried behind c mac um but we've seen it a, you know, a handful of times already in the last two years, like quarter, the running backs that have been paid, they still move around. So there's no guarantee that C Mac's going to be there for two or three more years, you know, and he did just miss all year long. So I take Chuba at 2 7. I could take Chuba before Tony or St. Brown just to put the talent on my team and Definitely say, hey, the best running know, back talent on the board, hands I'll, down. I could, Left, take, yeah. I could take Chuba there easy. Um, for me, a couple more spots earlier, and, and I mean his talent is probably is is right up there with maybe the fourth best running back in this class. Right, and then just a, you said you didn't have to make decision because St. Brown was there gone. If you're looking at St. Brown or Tony, if your team is stacked and you don't and you're just looking for a bench guy on your taxi squad, maybe you take Tony for the long play. But mm-hmm. if you need somebody and you're like, hey, man, I actually by week three, I might actually need a receiver who's catching balls that just make me to give me 10 points because I don't I'm my for some reason I'm stacked in other spots or I've got some really old receivers that are about to fall apart. St. Brown might be your guy there. That might be your logic between those two players. For me, I would take Chuba and just put the a beast of a running back on my team. 
I like it. We are all huge Chuba supporters over here. Uh, I love that we're putting them on in the middle of the second here. Oh, he love, ain't getting by me that in you, the middle of the second. that you take him even sooner than that. Wish it would be a little bit so different circumstance and I could have taken him in the first round because I do love the guy. There's plenty of receivers that are probably might see the field before. I mean, there's plenty of running backs that might see the field before him, but I'm taking him talent and saying, I, like I, it. I, I know you're round. buried, you're buried, but I've been, I can show you draft boards where I took Chuba in the middle of the second round mm-hmm. and there was, there's, running backs kenny gainwell might be getting way more run and if you got uh, cmc 100 percent, right like easy no. call easy, easy call all right so i'm gonna uh two eight i'm gonna take pat fryer Muth, tight end premium here um he's getting a little love right now only thing that keeps me from maybe even moving him into the st brown spot is i just don't know what the fate is of that organization after big ben here if, if, if big ben was 32 uh, I think Fryermuth would be in for just fantastic. I do trust the Steelers. Maybe they have they got all upside in Haskins here. Maybe he ends up being all right in the future for them. But it's just a little bit of question mark there. But tight ends do take a little while. You're going to give me Fryermuth in the middle of the second. I'm not going to complain about that at all. I think that's uh, you know about about properly rated, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm down to take Pat there, um, and and good 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 buzz out of camp right now. So. I play in a lot of short bench leagues, so Fryermuth hadn't been on the tip of my tongue a whole lot. If you got some bench spots, I'm all in on Pat too. I just I haven't really talked to about him much because I'm slant more towards the FFPC, and I've learned my lesson about getting too many young tight ends and holding them. Even though I said I could take Pitts at one one, um, yeah. So I like I like throwing the talent of Pat on my taxi squad or at the bottom of a deep bench in a dynasty league and. And just hanging on because it, if it happens, it could be great. And it could happen. Some of it could happen this year. I mean, they uh, – who knows if they really like Ebron or not. They might have just been filling a hole with Ebron. And I mean, Ebron had a decent year. I think he's Ebron a and tight end threat. It's going to take don't. a minute, but that's sure. every tight end. I mean, yeah. you're not you're not drafting Fryermuth right here to put in your tight end one but spot. But right he could now. have a couple of flashes as a rookie yeah. that gives you that – you know sure. the rookie tight end but hey he's already out there playing versus all it took was a couple plays know, from versus boy a, over in a, la rams uh gerald everett made some pretty electric looking plays as a rookie and it was right. like held Komet, his value for a couple Komet more had years. some run at the end of the year for the bears i love Komet right now Komet had a couple of four and five catch games at the end of the year that's all it They've takes is just seeing that he's on the on the on the season Stop I mean, seeing that he's on the on the field he's good and you know and you, of course, would like to see, you like to see that trend up as it goes. Like you, you look at the game log for commit, you see his, you see him playing towards the end of the year. All right, uh, two nine. Would the court be willing to break break? <laughs> Grant me a short bathroom break. No, we got to keep this rolling. We got let's I, get to the second. But it can't wait. All right, well I'll take it from here then. All right. Well, I, um, well all right, I'll do my pick. I guess Kenny Gainwell. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you make it to the end of the Run second. Run a tight here. ship over here. Yeah. Um, gain well, why? I, I I really enjoy the player, the college prospect. I don't know, can he be more than Naheem Hines? I don't know if I blew this pick. Maybe I should have taken, maybe I should have taken who goes off the board next. I could have taken Josh Palmer. I don't know. I don't know if I should have taken Kenny Gainwell. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with the Eagles running back stable. They want to split carries between Sanders and Boston Scott. I feel like he'll get some run and he can play the slot. Is he ever going to be more than like an okay back of the end RB2? You know, it's not. It, it Part of me wants to get excited about him because he is such a good wide receiver as a running back. Well, let me let me but jump like, into it. Like, where's his ceiling? If you're asking if he's an okay back of the end RB2, like if he's top 24, then he doesn't have to be more than that, especially at 2 9. He never has to be more than 12 points a game at 2 9 mm-hmm. if you can plug him in. But I don't know. Like he's, a, you know, he's a buck ninety. Like he's a running back. Is he? Is he going to play receiver out of the backfield, or is he? You know, he's like probably going to hit the slot a decent amount. So if I he, would think, I would think he'd have a if, pretty decent route to run. If metric. he's, if he's, if he could give you ten points a game at two nine, it's a great pick. But if you know at two nine, you're also giving up a chance for some of these next receivers that could potentially come in and be good on your team or they could be i mean you're at two nine in a rookie draft yeah, yeah. you could once you get past in my opinion once you get past when you once you get past tuba you're throwing darts anyway yeah well Gainwell, like you said 
I think he could be Sirianni's been involved with uh, some Eckler and been involved with some. Yep. Yep. Um, who's the guy you just said? Naheen Hines. So I think that's maybe like could be possibly be a floor for Gainwell type of player. Gainwell was the guy who kept Antonio Gibson off the field. They could, um, I mean, they could have Gainwell's they, they a fantastic vision. player. I like that um, point right there. He kept Antonio Gibson off the. And I'm not saying field. coaches get that right all the time. Sure. Anyway, I'm just saying it's like, but Gainwell can do a lot of different things. Yes, I I'm, think Sirianni's probably over his skis here. I don't know what's going to happen. Skis, but skis. I do Both think he's he's got. I do think he has just a a, a lot of potential here. So I'm 100 percent fine with taking. Uh, Kenny Gainwell at 2-9. They seem like they're uncertain about Miles Sanders even over oh, there right yeah, now. Oh, yeah, So, I mean, and Boston <laughs> yeah, Scott, yeah. I'm pretty sure Kenny Gainwell can outplay Boston Scott. I would think um, so. So, I'm fine with that. I like Boston it. Scott's the resident. And Kenny's sure. the Gainwell. Or, True. Kenny's the Gainwell. Kenny's the incumbent, mm -hmm. the new guy. Not Gainwell's such a good receiver. Not He's the incumbent. Word the incumbent is the, uh, the Boston guys. Scott's the incumbent. Right. And Kenny's the resident. The newly <laughs> Both of those go together for Boston Sky. Kenny Gainwell got no chance if you're listening to Jay. It's late. Um, all right. Big co. I'm going to pee. Okay. I went with Nico Collins. Um, a crowded depth chart mainly because a little bit of craziness and free agency out of the Texans. But anybody that's 6'4", 222 at the end of uh, the second round can jump on my team. Um, you know, I'm just – that's uh, – sometimes you got to put find something to hang your hat on. And um, I'm, I'm hanging my hat all the way through the third round. You find something you can kind of, hey, that's a check mark. 6'4", 222, Nico Collins, welcome to the squad. That's all I need to see. You got size, you can't teach that. Yeah. Are you going to be a good wide receiver? I don't know. Maybe I drop your ass. But right now, sign up. Yeah, just, just a, a good prospect as, as far as the player coming in, prototypical size and, and you know, not – crazy fast but not certainly plenty athletic um you're seeing people's jones getting some love coming out of that same michigan program hasn't been very ripe with quarterbacks or producing high octane true uh skill position players there and i think nico collins i think this is a great stab here there's obviously a cluster of guys on this next tier here that we're about to get into into the at end of the second third round obviously if deshaun watson's playing in you know in Houston, then Nico Collins is, could easily be up there with Kadarius Tony if he was getting some love right now. Like, oh, the, the connection between right. Nico Collins and Watson's really heating up. Um, and it's Brandon Cooks over there. That's who they got. That's like, what I'm you saying. Know, like, it, it uh, wouldn't take much. It's dynasty. So sometimes you have to be patient. And he'll probably be on the field this year, I would assume. Who's going to keep him off? They just traded Randy Anthony Cobb. Miller? They just, right. Nope. And the Bears didn't like him. Yeah. I like him a lot more than the Bears did. You know, so, I mean, and obviously Anthony Miller's not trying to play the same wide receiver position as Nico Collins, I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, Nico doesn't strike me as a get in the slot and stay there kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's solid. It's a yeah. solid stab for the 2-9, you know, the two ten pick on your team. Throw Nico in there. So, right around the same deal, I took Amari Rodgers next. I get the one-year Aaron Rodgers. We don't know what's going to happen. They traded for Randall Cobb, which definitely hurts a little bit of Amari Rodgers stock short I think. term bummer for sure but um but I mean I, I don't I personally don't believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to be in Green Bay past this year true um so all around not the best thing for Amari Rodgers here I like the player I like the potential I like that he could get on the field and maybe grab himself a spot here um and I think he will be fine long term um, oh for sure and and best slot wide receiver to come out of Clemson ever and so, we got some in the pros. I thought maybe you could get a little juice here. A lot of these guys left on the board probably aren't getting any juice, so you might get some juice now. And all these other guys you're going to be waiting for anyway, probably after this receiver-wise. So I figured, fuck it, I'm going to take Amari Rodgers here. <laughs> um, all right, so 212. And then we'll we'll go rapid fire through the last of these. And if Big Co, if you want to get out of here, I know you, it's late, super late for you. Tylon, 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 Tylon. The five best wide receivers alive. 212. I love it. I, I love the potential. I struggled with Tylon and Eli Mitchell here, Elijah Mitchell with the, with those two picks. It sounds so. like Josh Palmer should come into the mix here Agreed. for this pick. Agreed. I sounds like Eskridge like, uh, as well. And in the same vein, is probably not going to be super productive this year. But I think out of the rest of these guys, he's got the best quarterback situation um, and was in, in contention there. I like there. crack. So let's pause real quick. 
we didn't we didn't put Mac Jones in here. No, we don't have to give ra- rationale or anything. And then if if you would put Kellen Mond or any other quarterback in the second round, and then put Matt, where would you put Mac Jones going backwards in that first round? Is it one? For, is it after Smith? Is it after Waddle? Is it after Terrace? Uh, pick pick your spot there, and then let me know in the second round if you would take any quarterbacks in the second round over those guys. If you need a quarterback, take Mac Jones after Chase and Zach Wilson are gone. If Probably. you need a quarterback, if but, you don't have a quarterback, if, you, if you're struggling for that second quarterback, take him over Terrace, take him over Rondell Moore, take him over Sermon. That would be my advice. Take That's what I would do. Waddle and Smith because you got to have a starter and Mac Jones. Uh, if you need a quarterback. If you, if you need a second quarterback, you got to take Mac Jones after Chase, after Zach Wilson. That would Wilson. be before Smith and Waddle. That's, I mean, you got, you got to. I mean. If you need that QB. I think that's fair. In Bill Belichick, do you trust or not? Because he, got, he just got a first-round quarterback. And he hasn't had a first round quarterback maybe ever because he took Tom Brady in his fifth round or something and did and rode him for twenty years. Yeah. Like so we don't even know. I might put that line at Javante Williams, one one more guy, and then Mac. But I mean I'm taking Zach Wilson before that, like we yeah. talked about. Uh, so I, yeah. I think you pigeonhole Mac and Mac in there just because it says QB. That's fair. That's uh, just you got to do what you got to do. And then I'm probably not taking any of those quarterbacks in the second round. Uh, Kellen Mond's next guy. Uh, I'm fine with taking Kellen Mond at the end of the second. Agreed. I mean, I think we just made a lot of. We talked about the Gainwells and the Nico Collins and stuff. But for me, Gainwell's I think after after Chuba goes off, I could take Kellen Mond because he runs around and it's the NFL, man. Anything can happen. Fair enough. I you know I would argue with you, but it just I'm always wrong when we talk about yeah <laughs> those guys. So. <laughs> Um, all right. As soon as he gets out there running, you're gonna t- you can turn for a profit. Let's keep it moving as quick as we can here right. and the, wrap this thing up. All right, Big Co, you're up three one. Three one. Elijah Mitchell, um, favorite pick at the back half of the second, early third. Putting uh, putting a running back on the team that that has San Francisco in front of his name. I'll let Casey tell you why he likes Elijah, Mit- Elijah, Elijah Mitchell, other than the fact that he's on San Fran. Um, you know. 5'11", 217. If, if Elijah Mitchell was 197 pounds, I wouldn't like him as much. And that's just I, – I, I might – were we on the air when I was talking about not everybody can be shady? Or was that – No, we were on the air, yeah. I, we've been, been on the been, air for been here a while. four and a half hours now, so I couldn't remember. <laughs> that uh, was Carter. You know, like we were just, talking about Carter. You right, there. right. It just – it, it, when it, it Carter apps keep looking. More likely than not, it really – like there's weight ranges when running backs – Get in and stay in, and the two seventeen is that's that's right in the middle of that range where if you get in and you do well, you can stay in for a while. And he's on San Fran, so three one. I had to snap him up. More of part of the reason why I can push Trey Sermon down later. Give me the cheaper San Fran running back. And if you read up on San Fran, which I'm sure nobody's quite reading up, I'm sure there are San Fran fans who are reading up on him as much as I am. But Elijah Mitchell has just got rave reviews. Some people saying outperforming Sermon. Um, so I think this has become my favorite shot to take the San Fran next to the name because of the offense and the potential running quarterback, even without the running quarterback. Awesome. We've never even got to see this offense. We saw one game with RG3. Right. Uh, you know, maybe more than one game. We saw a couple games. Half a season. Um, so, yeah, give me, give, me, give me Mitchell all day. I could, like I said, could have easily taken him over Nico, Rodgers, or Tylen Wallace. I've, I've, give me him. I want the running back, and I want him now. So <laughs> I want him now. Um, Eskridge is the next guy, 3-2. It was basically like I was starting to say, I could have taken him where I took Amari Rodgers, and my thought process was, has the best quarterback of this cluster of quarter of, of guys coming up here. I mean, you could argue Herbert, I guess, um, and obviously Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers, I'm not so sure, is going to be in that situation. I feel pretty decent about Russ hanging around in Seattle. Um, and, you know, maybe he doesn't quite get on the field as much as he'd like, but I think they need a third. Uh, Lockett stays in and out of the lineup a little bit. I think he could be a guy like Lockett. Hasn't been playing the position long, switched over from corner, uh, lit the lit – the, seen on fire for um for receivers here with Eskridge uh, a lot of the pro draft guys were, were all in on him 
uh, thought he could go a little higher. I think he ended up being a second round pick. Uh, so there's capital there. Uh, they need another guy. And I like the organization. I like the, that he's got a good quarterback already tied to him. Um, and, and, you know, if you've seen how bad that hairline is for Tyler Lockett, he's not going to be around too much longer. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Don't I'm bad mouth Tyler Rice Lockett. I'm, I'm not. I'm in not, front I'm of just, Jay Wayne. I'm just, uh, <laughs> that ain't going to go well. So I like Eskridge there at three two, especially not for a hairline. It's oh, that's true. Double Talking about how old he is, hit him where it hurts. Are you sixty eight with that hairline? I don't know. <laughs> Just barely older than you, Bo. Just barely. <laughs> All right, who are you taking? I took Deami Brown at three three. I could probably take Josh Palmer. I was debating between those guys, and then Big Co took Josh Palmer right after me. I was like, ah, dang it! I probably should have taken Josh Palmer. Deami Brown's a, a pretty electric type player. The potential, I like the prospect. Don't love the situation. Josh Palmer, good prospect in his own right. Strong off the field character. He's from Canada. He had to come to the U.S. as like a 15 year old. Left his parents. Like was just he's been working towards football his whole life since he was a, a mid teenager. And he treated his time at Tennessee like it was a job. And he went there and showed up. Uh, he's he's got a pretty strong character, and I I feel good about him and the pros doing what he needs to do to to be there for his team and produce for his team whatever they need to do. So I, I, and, I, I and like fair to make the thing. argument that you know Keenan Allen, although great and and Keenan's uh, old, thrown Keenan, down a lot. Keenan a little Mike old. Dubs probably not and, too long in the tooth and there either. Not going to hang around right. for much longer. So could could and he's out real quick. Who's the three? Who's the three for them? Yeah, right. you know. Always out. looking for a third. You know, talk talk to my wife about it on the reg. Uh, <laughs> Got to find that third. So sounds I, great in theory. I took Yami Brown. I like the talent. I could probably I, I, in retrospect You'd do it out of town. <laughs> I probably should have taken Josh Palmer, but I, I, right. I, I can't argue with either one of those wide receivers. Three, four, Josh Palmer. Well, I took Palmer. I'll leave everything that Jay Wayne said right there on the table. And, and then he's got Herbert. And you talking to your wife about a third too? It's got to be out of town on vacation. <laughs> Every so time. nobody knows anything, and we'll Every use our wrong time. names. You both. Have, okay, got oh, it, we've already got planned it. it out. So he's with Herbert. That's what's all your, I need to see. What's your code name? That's all I need to Natasha? see. Natasha? Kyle. No. Doris. It's <laughs> a true lies quote. For your pleasure. All I right. took Zach Wilson next. Quarterback left. I mean, I feel like it's good value here. Um, like you said, first round quarterback. If he comes out and lights it up. Some people love Zach Wilson. You got Wilson. something. You, you got, got something. You got something here. So that's, that's I just, bam, took him. All right. Jay Wayne. I went with my boy Cornell Powell so that Big Co couldn't take him. I wanted to just claim the Clemson Tiger. Corn Powell. Uh smooth little mover. Didn't didn't had had a long line of guys in front of him. Finally uh broke out and produced in twenty twenty. So late breakout age, they don't like that, but he's a chief. He he's uh, he's got some deceptive speed and, and can pluck the ball in the air. He can high point it, drink, and uh Clemson wide receiver, so how can you go wrong on the Chiefs? Decent stab in the third round. Love can't, the can't Chiefs receiver stab in the third. Well, when we yeah, Powell came up in a group chat in another draft or something, and <laughs> I was talking about the lack of wet depth chart at the wide receiver position in Chiefs, and Jay Wayne goes, why? Because because Mecole sucks. Mecole ain't no good. It's like these guys are two different Trade players. Trade for Mecole Harbin. Trade Demarcus, for Mecole Harbin. Yes, Demarcus Robinson. Is had his chance last year. He's not a threat. You can't Powell catch you. <laughs> is there's not a lot of a lot ahead of him. I mean, you got Miko and Tyreek do are not even close to this type of wide receiver that Powell would be. And they they got, Byron Pringle, baby. I mean, Powell could easily be a nice solid outside weapon for Travis for from Mahomes sooner than later. Um, and maybe he does nothing for a year, but it, it, it wouldn't take much for him to get a, the Patrick Mahomes bump, yep. the Chiefs offense True. bump, and that's why he's a great third round stab. He's like a Gator tail. Big Mahomes big bump. go. You're uh, three seven. A two hundred and sixteen pound running back with good hands. They love his hands. Yeah, I'm not. Chris Evans ain't getting by me, but. Fair enough. Mixon, I, Mixon hasn't been the picture of health. Mixon might be. He they might be like Ryan, the biggest, 
So much, yeah. Mixon, Mixon might be one of the biggest values in the draft this year, and they might he might be rolling and crushing, but t- maybe he gets 25 touches a game, and then week 10 he goes down. That's the NFL. That's Fair enough. You know, that's so – you got a, a a guy here who's they're saying they love him in camp and he's got good hands and honestly I didn't know much about him and I was like all right yeah he's got good hands whatever click on him expected to see 199 pounds wait a minute he's got good hands and he's 216 pounds I'll take him. we just talked about that non uh, pipeline of the premier athletes that Michigan gets its hands on being exposed and being ex- excelling to the great levels that they can chris evans is another one right um so all right so three eight hunter long i think he could i would take him as the second tight end overall but you don't have to so i don't um <laughs> it was premium here so i'm going to start stabbing at as many tight ends as i can here and he did through the last part of this and pretty yeah, bad injury we don't know what it is yet uh but he was doing performing well in camp i love hunter long uh kind of came across him when i was looking at up at pits and he was one of the only tight ends that was anywhere near uh some of the categories that pits was doing in the pff like big time stats that they do all sorts of contested catches and all those crazy stats of everything hunter long was a name that consistently popped up over and over and over and over again and then in watching him um i think he's uh, a really strong player and was this quote unquote turning heads already and, and now a little leg injury. So uh, still love taking him three, eight all day. Uh, Jay Wayne, three, nine. I went with Kylan Hill. Like the prospect, love strong it. hands, uh, good burst, hard to bring down. I think he had 116 missed tackles forced average 3.34 yards after contact per attempt. That's pretty strong numbers out of Mississippi State. And so I like the all-around player. He's buried there. Aaron, Aaron Jones, Jones already got a, a. hammy. Dillon. But just takes a couple injuries. And I love the, the system. Kyle, Matt, before Shanahan over there in Green Bay, even past Aaron Rodgers, because I don't think Kyle Nils probably probably not getting it in with Aaron Rodgers unless injuries happen and they're yeah. forced to. But – Bummer, uh, but, got, I mean, if Aaron Jones is hurt, then he's going to get some receiving production because I don't think they're just going to feed A.J. Dillon the receiving balls that the Matt LaFleur's want, Kyle LaFleur's wants to to implement. Bummer he got a little buried because I was excited about him being right. a nice uh, Chuba value, got buried. Still, Kylan Hill got buried. Still will take Elijah him. Elijah Mitchell like got buried. Love All the, the guys we like. Love the talent. Trey Sermon went to the 49ers, no longer a deal. Yeah. All right, Big Co, 310. I took Stevenson. The the if if Cam Newton's the quarterback, the Patriots are going to be pounding the rock over and over and over again. And just like Jay said, you take a couple of injuries, and and next thing you know, um, you might have a bright spot. I mean, I think if Mac Jones comes in there and something happens to Cam, and Mac Jones is in there, I think it'll be a little less chance that I have a, a you know a freshman breakout on my hands here. But if Cam's in there running it and you know, get a couple injuries. Maybe Stevenson's, uh, you know, gets uh, three touchdowns in two weeks. And then all of a sudden everybody knows who he is. I think we're in okay shape here, at, however it plays out, because I don't think Bill's just going to turn it over and to, to Mac Jones and be like, hey, we're about to throw it a million times. So I think you might be in okay case either sure. way here. So sure. They do have a crowded <coughs> stable over there. Do, and it should shake out. We'll see what happens. But they've been giving him some love. So Yeah. 311, 22 Atwell. Rams, speedy guy. Stop the slide. High, high capital on If he him. wasn't so damn skinny, I would have already taken him. I'll, I'll take the swing here. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever forget the way I felt when the Rams called out a wide receiver. That wasn't that Terrace Marshall? That wasn't Terrace Marshall. Oh, me neither. It doesn't make any sense. None. I know what they want to do, but it's not like you can't find a fast guy to run in a straight line. I think they it, want him to return punts and kicks. I don't even know if they want him on the field for receptions. I mean, they don't. I mean, if they if if it all goes well, Tutu doesn't see the field. Djax is out playing that role, but they got like a, hey, this the, another really fast straight line kind of guy to stretch the field and do what they want to do. But you could have Terrace, man. You can go get you a tall, a fast ass receiver after Terry. Bring, bring in Marcus draft Goodwin in there. Draft two two out well the next round. Nobody's taking him that <laughs> early. Like you overthought it. You overthought it. They did it. say with a lot of the draft guys that two two was had a lot of buzz with a lot of teams as a higher pick. So maybe maybe not. But I agree. How do you not take Terrace Marshall? They were over there in that Malibu house and they. Probably- <laughs> Probably had the good stuff going around in a bunch of different forms of it. And uh, they... Toot-toot. Toot-toot. 
Terrace. Two. Oh no, I'm at Terrace. <laughs> two ter- Damn it. Card's already in. <laughs> all right. So they fucked up. They meant to take Terrace. They meant all to right. take Terrace. <laughs> all right. All right. Toot toot. <laughs> all right. 312, and then we'll wrap it oh, up. Oh, we'll Go Jones, real fast. What a boring ass pick. Hey, it's good value, though. <laughs> Gotta take <laughs> Next. it. Next. Gotta take it. <laughs> Much more fun pick. Kellen Mond. Kellen Mond. Yeah. Got to. With the, with the legs. Just ha- give me call, Mac Jones, but then call hike Kellen and Mond. let him run. All right, so I'm going to take just or uh, yeah, Jamar Jefferson here. You wish you took Justin Jefferson. Yeah, little little buried on the chart here, but Swift missing some time, and you know what's that about? Don't don't love this. I I, I just took him because it was the running back left, and and Swift's out already, and and he had some 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 good good parts to his season. So uh, Jefferson at four two. I nailed it at four three. Took Jacob Harris. Love it. Just, uh, just scoop Jacob Harris. Scoop him on your team. Put him on. Yeah, these are these are late round picks that uh, I want to in tight end premium. I'm gonna be trying to swing on as many tight ends as I can. Um, I love the Jacob up. Harris. That's one of them for sure. Yeah. Uh, I got Marset out of Minnesota. Obviously, um, love it. Looking um, for that third baby. What's his name? Is not gonna be there too much longer. Thielen. Thielen's not getting any younger. Jefferson, Jefferson's got and, an AC um, sprain. Kirk Cousins not getting any more <laughs> vaccinated. <laughs> Don't know what's going on with their quarterback. <laughs> um, no, I think Marset's a solid, solid pickup there. And I think just like what Jake said and Casey said about Harris, some of these made it to the fourth round in this draft because we picked every three picks. You know, this was just the three of us making these picks and alternating. I could easily take Jacob Harris, Marset, or Noah Gray over – Stevenson, you know, I could did these guys, all these guys could go into the third round for me, just out of straight Agreed. up uh, upside. Love it. Um, so I, I grabbed Noah Gray here, another tight end. Um, obviously on the Chiefs, they're Chiefs. saying they really like what they got going on there. Maybe some more two tight end sets going down uh, for Kansas City. Give them boys a new wrinkle. Little, uh, hopefully you can get a little Travis Kelsey in training. Um, and they've, they've really liked what they saw there. So it's just pure upside, pure value, 1.5 uh, per tight end here. I'm going to stab on some of these tight ends that get left. They see they always just seem to be, once we get to this point, I like the Marsets of the world, but just seem to be um, the best value stabs that you can possibly get to, to, to tur- turn into something. Exactly. Uh, well, I said the Chiefs bump for Powell right in the third round. Noah Gray, we get one blurb about two tight end sets, he looks good. He's tearing it up at camp. Everybody in Chiefs loves Noah Gray. If that blurb comes out about a second tight end in Miami, he's not getting Hunter Long, that. baby. Well, you know what? <laughs> exactly. But you know what I mean. Like, it just, yeah, if that blurb yeah. comes yeah, yeah, out yeah. about a second tight end, it's just the Chiefs. Oh, the Chiefs? Oh, and then if they like him as a second tight end, and then what if Kelsey gets hurt? Mahomes to Noah Gray, baby. You know, like that's yeah. it just, there's only a handful of teams that give you that bump, and the Chiefs are the top. Top one, top so team. Four six. I took Anthony Schwartz. Just speed, speed demon throwing darts. At, yeah, you know, a little speed demon. Why not? Yeah. Um, big probably, probably the highest draft capital left on the board. Sure. So, I threw a tight end premium tight end on the team, Brevin Jordan. I think Casey told me a few weeks ago he was like the number one tight end coming out of high school. Yeah, he was um, a top prospect for sure. Could have went a couple different ways. Julio's not staying in Tennessee forever. I thought about taking Dez. He was the next pick. Um, I, I, I like the stab on Brevin. At Houston, nobody wants anything to do with Houston right now. Right. So that's the Sean's there. That Brevin's probably up a round or two. Exactly. So that's you got to got to see what you can get in the fourth round. And I think that's a good stab. I took Fitzpatrick just to put him on the board here to say this is value right here. I don't know if he's if he's great or anything. I'm not going to say I've gotten super deep on Des Fitzpatrick here. Uh, they took him in the fourth round. They could have taken other receivers. They when traded they a to lot him. to get up. They traded a lot to get there to get him. That where they at least traded up to get him. Yeah. And before they passed on before Julio got there, he was in the third round. Mm-hmm. So there's your value right there. Julio could get hurt. He, Julio could be awesome. I hope Julio crushes. Yeah. But. Let's just be real here about the odds and the percentages. Julio ain't been playing full seasons in two or three years anyway. And mm, not, just last year. Not that Fitzpatrick is going to come in there right away, but, you know. Who, Julio's been healthy for the a The quarterback's while. paid, and if the, new, if, if, the, if the offensive system can continue losing their offensive leader to the new Falcons head coach, then Fitzpatrick could be some real good value in the fourth round. All Agreed. Right. 
Uh, so I took Tommy Tremble next. Love Tommy. it. Love it. Taking a tight end stab. He's more of a blocker than a passer. And Dan Arnold's been getting a lot of love with Sam Arnold. Darnold. Yes. Dan, Dan Arnold. Not so the deal with Tommy, though, is is basically they were saying super underused, very athletic. Like that, that, That's the allure of him, that this guy could be a Kelsey type Ertz type kind of a guy who catches a bunch of passers on the squad and and has just was completely underutilized and and there's a diamond in the rough possibly with Tremble and you tell me that kind of shit and I'm all in rough Um, I would have taken him over Des Fitzpatrick I just wanted to put Des on the board here all right Um, so then big co's up Larry Roundtree running back teammate Justin Herbert no, I mean obviously I'm a big uh, I'm a big um, fan of the what dang my what's Eckler the, Eckler I'm a huge Eckler fan. Justin Jackson looks good sometimes and sometimes not so much. Get um, a lot of love lately. They got they got uh was it is it Moss? They got no. uh, they got uh, Josh Kelly. Josh, Josh Kelly. Kelly. Not I Zach get Moss. I get Zach Moss and Josh Kelly mixed you. up for some reason I don't know why. So they got Josh Kelly. Um, it, this is just you know that late. It, into the draft, got to pick somebody. Pick and in the run, I like these picks to be. I did just take Brevin Jordan on the other pick, but I mean he was number one tight end as high school. You, you got to some, find something to hang your hat on, right? For me, it's just it's I'm gonna t- and I don't really know who to pick, so I'm gonna take the running back on a team that I like. And if injuries hit, that's fine. He may be the first out when waiver wires come around. You know, I have no problem having being like, all right, well this guy in two or three weeks. Hopefully all the running backs on the Chargers are healthy, but we've seen it before. Two guys could go down in one week, and all of a sudden Roundtree's the backup, the direct backup, because just he's been in camp, and they don't want to sign somebody off the street. They don't know what's going on. Roundtree's been around. That's just kind of how I look at it. If it works out, great, but it's probably not. Yeah, I mean, Larry was a guy over at um, – at, uh, Missouri there for a while, been there for a while, had some injuries. Was one of those guys that I was always looking at. Is that guy had that guy come out? Had that guy come out? He had some good seasons there, so I don't hate the stab here. Um and like you said, he's on the Chargers, so round tree. Um I took the tight end from the Colts, Granson, uh getting a little buzz here. Uh so I'm gonna stab on that guy. They need a tight end real bad. Yeah. Um it's Jack Doyle, it's Mo Alley Cox, neither one of them have quite taken the bull by the horns here, and this guy's getting a little buzz, so I'll go ahead and snap him up. I like it. Uh, at the end of every draft that I possibly can. You've gotta be your bull. They have a quarterback who likes to throw it to the tight end. You they have just, a coach who likes to scheme the tight end the ball, has been looking for the tight ends. Just connect some dots, people. Kylan Granson. All right, well. Remember the name. Draft him. I had the last pick. I took Trey McKitty, tight end, drafted by the Chargers Chargers in the third round. Decent little draft Decent capital. capital. And I already have Parham on my team because I'm scooping up Parham, 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 all over the place. Got to get Parham on your team. Parham, Parham. So tight end premium, no Param, reason Param. to not grab the guy behind him who – was a Georgia prospect, transferred to Florida State at the other end. Way, other way, I think, maybe. No, 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 I, I got it right. Had 49 <laughs> catches last year no, for Florida got State. Got it right. Uh, just, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of tight end catches for one year in college. And let me get, let me get Justin Herbert a potential target at Boom. the end of the fourth round. Not too many guys even were drafting left. Like, we left off JV and Hawkins. Dokes. You know, could have taken him, Dokes. You guys, wasn't there a funk somewhere? Oh yeah, funk. Yeah, the funk man. He's on the uh, <laughs> the, funk the Rams. Man. Funk, old funk man. Got any last? No, let's get the hell out of here. I gotta go home. It's late. I'm sweaty. Hey, appreciate y'all for sticking with us. We'll catch you on the next one. Just under two hours. <sighs> appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs>